Do you want to take a life? Do you want to cross that line? Because it's a long way back from hell. Nergerotic.com What's up, party people? Well, that was a terrible way to start. I'll never do that again. <laughs> party people. Party people. <laughs> that a little straightened out there. Hi, uh, this is the Nerd Rotic Nooner. It's it's uh it's Wednesday, uh June 8th, 2022. We've got eight days till the Dallas Dallas meetup. Hell yeah. And we've got two really crappy shows to talk about. I don't think anybody's <laughs> gonna be surprised. That these shows are crappy. I, you know what? I am a little surprised. Obi Wan is this crappy. I thought they would try. It is surprising how how little they did try with the Kenobi show. You you'd think this is our last shot. You know, we're we've run out of things to rehash. Kenobi and Darth Vader. That's the last thing. Let's go. And they did this. <laughs> it's wow. it's so remarkably mundane and mediocre and uncreative. And, you know, action shot in like, you know, wide shots. It's just like so mm. I'm watching this going like because sometimes you'll hear like people um, in the mainstream media will kind of mock pop culture and Star Wars fans of like, oh, that Star Wars stuff is. And now I feel like, oh, I agree with them now. It's it's yeah. this is garbage. And I'm embarrassed to be a fan of this stuff now. Like it's it's um, God, this this fourth episode. Which, of course, we're just spoilers. We don't care, right, Gary? No, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, we're saving it's, people. It's, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. It's like everything that happened in this episode, we have seen done better in other Star Wars storytelling, in the movies in particular. So they're just doing a, 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 a lesser quality version of that and, and in a really uncreative way. So it's like we've talked about before that like all the Star Wars going forward is just influenced by previous Star Wars, whereas the original Star Wars was influenced by, you know, science fiction like Dune or, um, you know, serials of the 1930s like Flash Gordon or mm. history or, you know, classic hero storytelling a la Joseph Campbell. And this is influenced by what it's nothing. It's just it's a garbage, cheap looking show that looks like every episode shot in six days if that you know it's yeah when, it's when you brought that up when we were talking uh that seems to make a lot of sense like these yeah. these scenes and we're trying to apply logic and reason to to, to disney plus which i know is just a waste of time <laughs> right, but, um, right. like we're trying to figure this out as human beings is like okay disney you either just don't give a fuck i mean like just don't give a fuck. We're going to go to marketing research and we need we need to know from the marketing team what beats we need to hit before we write a script. Then we go to the diversity officer and we ask her, well, how do we balance out a white male lead? Well, you know, you got to put in a bunch of POCs around them, about five or six or seven at all times. You know, they don't have to be speaking all the time, but they have to be at some point telling him what to do or shaming him or bossing him around. Our male lead has to be a complete fucking moron. And hey, let's just add on top of that. Let's make Darth Vader a dipshit too, okay? <laughs> All right. That's Kenobi. So I, I that's before it's even written. I, I don't even know what. I, I, they just, they're just bad. They're bad at what they do. They are not 
very good at what they do. They do not make entertainment. They make content and it's garbage. It's written like crap. So it makes the actors, the pretenders look terrible. And this is it. This was particularly bad. This episode, yeah. there is a big, long scene where Riva is interrogating little 10 year old Princess Leia in the what the fuck is it mm. called? The Inquisitor or whatever the fuck whatever in the uh in the inquisitor's main base they have this little 10 year old girl who's the daughter of an imperial senator for some reason uh and they know a lot more than they so now darth vader knows that bail organa is connected to ben kenobi uh. now <laughs> that's a little problem with the can that's a, that might be a little problem a little bit I mean, aside from the fact that Leia shouldn't be in this, uh, by the way, the main, the head inquisitor is fucking dead. He is dead, 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 dead. He's not coming back. Uh, and it doesn't matter because I don't, I doubt that. I mean, they couldn't have watched rebels if they didn't no, watch they the, didn't. the Sith. So mm, no, yeah. this is like what Chris was saying. It's, it's rehashing the same ideas over and over and over. It's like whenever you clone, somebody over and over in stories and they eventually become like little retard people that can't function because they've been cloned so many times in the degradation down that's what we're to we're down we're seeing the same interrogation scene that we've seen in the first star wars we're seeing the same sneaking into a base scene that we've seen in star wars and in rogue one and in, like it's like over and over and over and over but that's all they have is is to repeat what they purchased they purchased star wars so let's just continually repeat the same thing over and over and over and they can't even do that right like you think hey okay we're gonna make star we're gonna be safe we're just gonna make star wars we're gonna do the same thing that they did but they can't even do that right no and they definitely can't make anything new because if they try to make anything new that's also horrible it's just hey, hey exactly you exactly. know what we've seen as much as tatooine and in, in disney plus shows on Star Wars side, back to tanks. <laughs> oh my god! Everywhere, back fucking tanks. back to tanks. We're stupid with back That's, to tanks. <laughs> to me, this is one of the things that always made Star Wars great. Is that um, at least I'm talking about you know George Lucas Star Wars that there were always new ideas. You go to a different planet, right? There are three different environments that that would yeah. be three sort of key environments per movie and even in the prequels as much as the prequels are you know uh criticized rightfully although they've they've aged very well there's so many new ideas characters like darth maul general grievous uh even like designs of some of the the droid decas you know like things like that like there yeah. were so many new ideas new planets new alien species new like technology new types of things there's the, this this Obi-Wan series creates nothing new. And back to tanks, when Obi-Wan went in the back to tank because he burned his arm, it was just like these back to tanks don't work very well. Clearly, they didn't heal, you know, Anakin Skywalker. He's still scarred and covered in scars. So what the hell is he even doing in a back to tank? That's such a lazy use of that idea. And that's that's going back to what I said earlier is all of Star Wars now going forward the current and the writing is the weakest thing in the show the writing it's this is poorly written and it's also poorly directed deborah chow is no you know what under the best of circumstances under john favreau and maybe with a better schedule and a better team behind her and better people doing the storyboards for the action and better you know what i mean she she's good and uh a weak director, a journeyman director can look good with better surrounded by better people. She's not surrounded by very good people on this show. I mean, this is a Kathleen Kennedy production, right? This is what we've heard. Um, and so this is what you're getting is just like you were saying earlier, Garrett, like it's a copy of a copy of a copy and it looks like shit. And it's, and it's just no new ideas interjected. Um, you know, like it just, it's, where is it going? Is it leading to anything? He's got to get Leia. Like, okay. Yeah. And then all this interaction between the two of them, she knows he's Obi-Wan. Like, how does this square up with when they meet in, you know, well, they right. actually don't in technically, do they meet in a new hope? I'm trying to remember like he, no, like they don't, you know, yeah, they, they don't, don't. Te don't technically meet. She sees him. Briefly, I guess, as they're going to the Millennium Falcon, but yeah. So well, I don't know. Like, like the, the the it's just like it does. It feels it feels like a 
bad fan film. And there are, I, I, I don't want to use that word derisively. There are so many, so There's many great good ones, man. Fan films are great ones. Exactly. So, but this is just, it's, they should be embarrassed by this, that this what? is, this is the best you can do with the last sort of story that we care about here, which is sort of a, you know, Obi-Wan, what happened in those years between it's, it's, it's an embarrassment. I'm yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Darth Vader, like, like at no point, New Hope goes, "Man, this princess was sure slippery when she was ten years old. She evaded me, but I got yes. this time, that little bitch." You know, it's like, no, no. And the way Leia, like, the Leias don't track together. Okay, so this Leia is all like snappy, and so I'll say what I want when I want, whatever. And then when you cut to Star Wars: A New Hope, she's like. Uh, obi-wan kenobi you fought with my father in the clone wars please we totally you're my only hope out. like <laughs> what we, that doesn't make well, any sense cut that out of the original wouldn't you know? she be like yo what's up ben you know we we hung out you remember like we saved me from the inquisitor base yeah you know like hey could you come help me out right now because i'm being chased by darth vader again like <laughs> it just doesn't track someone's got to no. do a recut of that of that scene where obi-wan kenobi sees the hologram of hologram of <laughs> princess leia Maybe he sort of kicks back and rubs his beard and says, well, my, she has grown. Um, yes. I always love yeah. that Carrie Fisher wore no bra in that outfit. I thought that was great. Yeah. Was that one shot she's walking down the hallway. There's just, that was great. You know, you don't want, great. you don't want, no, uh, you, don't, you don't want those times to change. I mean, like, well, I was, 70s, you know, man. that's why I watched Logan run as a kid. Cause they were wearing like little felt, things over nakedness uh and i was like what's that as a six-year-old it's like, the future we could do a whole stream on uh on, yeah. on logan's run gary but i think the only two people to be interested in it would be you and i but yeah you know, I, I love, love that movie. movie love it love love logan's uh, run man Kenny yep. Agater. um but no but it's it's like and what's weird about this is like and, and like you you mentioned diversity before there's so i didn't realize the empire was so diverse this must have been before the empire put out the the netflix you know woke memo to try right. to like say hey if you don't if you're not on board with the empire you really need to get it out of here and look for other work no more white comfort uh, dissolving the imperial senate was getting rid of the sjw's in the empire right is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> except the That's empire weird. is the SKWs. it's perfect i think it really represents what disney is right now i think it's a perfect representation of disney uh, oh my god yes but that was their purge <laughs> oh god pretty awful oh maybe palpatine was right i don't know no uh yeah that that's the same thing from rings of power too at, at some point, we have to address the Hobbit and Elven ethnic cleansing that happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. before the third age. The same thing. It's dumb. It's dumb. I, I, I like, inc you know, inclusive space Nazis is an interesting thought. Probably not very good in, ac you know, pr presentation. I won't use the word execution. Yeah. I'll use the well, word presentation. It's because to them, this is not the same. To them, it's a full-on reboot. Everything that they're doing is not connected. They say it's connected publicly, right? Oh. So you so you go buy their product, but really everything that they're doing is their continuity. Yep. Their yep. continuity doesn't have to track with mm. what the actual continuity is because we're Disney. We bought it. We do whatever we want. Exactly. Yeah. And and they have every intention of remake. They're gonna remake the original trilogy of the decade. You think they, so? like, absolutely oh, yeah. why wouldn't they it's it's the especially now because their ex, expansion of the brand hasn't worked at all they have no new characters that have resonated at all with anybody outside of baby yoda and that's a gimmick uh the mandalorian is just another boba fett that they've made better than boba fett but he's the same fucking thing it's just you know they're just using derivative characters uh same thing that marvel's doing now um so yeah, they they have nothing original that star wars that they can move forward what are they gonna make a dr afro movie okay just in time for pride month right and it's like dr afro doesn't look anything like star wars at all um it's like they're they're, they're bisexual tank girl super scientist whatever it's stupid i've never read the comics and it's a lame so uh, you know what we were saying like this is their last step this is the last Concept. person they could kind of pull back they can they've done luke they've done leia they've done han they've done now darth vader and 
been right my the last straw for them they're gonna go back and do their story of the high republic and do a young yoda tv show i that's that's what they're gonna do and, and i know it it. Suck. and it's gonna suck it will absolutely suck everything they make will suck because they're not good i mean we're 10 years in like at one point you go you know i don't Yikes. think they're very good at it i i was at that point years ago <laughs> but you know uh, I, I watch this as just an observer, right? I'm like, I'm not really caring what's happening. I'm like, I'm not excited about seeing you McGregor back. I, right. I just, I'm like, wow, it's bo- for mostly, uh, most of the episode was boring. It was just the interrogation with Reva getting uh, Ben had to get chewed out by a few more people before, you know, he's asking for help and they don't want to help. And, you know, like it's the bunch of mis- mixed signals in this. Like you're saving people, but you don't want to save this person for some reason. Your wife died. Well, it looks like a lot of people's wives died and husbands died. Uh, it's bad. Things are bad. But you're supposed to be on this path thing. So you're on the path thing, but you don't want to help Leia. Okay, fine. Um, And the fact that like we're four episodes in and they've said Luke's name once. Yeah, well, shameful. Shameful. Uh, the yeah. whole thing it, it's it's the force is female it's kathleen kennedy she is just she's bad i mean how many times do we got to say she's bad and disney re-signed her re-signed her for three more years she has destroyed the golden goose that's how i mean hollywood's dumb there are a lot of very very dumb people in charge of a lot of money because they're very good at being uh mm, capitulant little lick spittles I mean, that's, you know, you got to be a backstabber and a lick spittle all at once. And that's how you survive in the corporate Hollywood environment. Uh, an environment I like was in for a year. I couldn't stand it. It was almost one of the most inhuman environments I've ever seen. Like, I, I'm not kidding. I have not seen that many people cry publicly since grade school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the <without> section <laughs> bawling their eyes out men women that is wow they're like, wow they're making pretend here was everybody so upset you know but uh that's the way it was and that that's it, it's it's actually a shock that we get anything good <laughs> that's that's the one i'm seeing creatives but, man uh, it's uh, the culture at disney though is what you were saying earlier it, it is like stealing other people's property it's it's growing off of the back of somebody that did something before you. Right. So that's all Disney does now purchase other property that was built by somebody more creative, more interesting as a person. That's all they do in including their own content. Everybody at Disney right now, the only reason Disney's doing well at all is because of what came before the CEO, all the way down to the creatives, all the way down. It's just built upon people that were more successful, more creative. And they have nothing to they that's why they're they're just kind of spinning the wheel wheels because they don't have any creativity to create anything new. The the you're right. And there are many reasons why this is bad, but the foundation is the one thing no one on the shill side they refuse to talk about it. even when they get right up against it, right up against they're about to talk about the the woke intersectional ideology that fucks this entire story before they even start because they can't focus on their main titular character obi-wan kenobi they have to surround him and balance him with identity politics instead of just making this a show about him a character study about him with some you know peripheral characters and darth vader out there somewhere right yeah. And it should have been a small story. It should have been more like, uh, if you're going to do this at all, like Unforgiven, Unforgiven, there should be no Leia, nothing. They're in the backwater. They're in, on Tatooine. It should have been just, you know, a kind of a ghost town. It should have been set like a Western. Absolutely. Yeah. If there's a bright center of the universe, this is the planet that's farthest from. Yes. Yeah. Um, farthest from. But instead, their ideology and their marketing made this god awful mess and i just think that big smiling ewan mcgregor over that 58 percent is beautiful <laughs> it's the best isn't it isn't it the best and some people you know i i totally agree with you rotten tomatoes is totally fake and totally shills 
But what I think the reason that we bring it up is because this is their playground. Their playground is Rotten Tomatoes. And in their playground, <laughs> the audience score is 58%. So that's when you know it's got to be real because if it's in their playground, they can't fudge it. Well, Why would they fudge it negatively? They wouldn't. They really pushed for review, the, the, the positive review bombing. Uh, I don't know if you caught that, Chris. In uh, a couple articles yeah. came out, and they said it's being negatively review bombed, and then they positively review bombed with very similar statements over and over again, especially mm -hmm. on Metacritic. But that's good, totally fine. Our good friend Ryan Kinnell uh, pointed that out multiple times uh, on live streams, and he's made at least two videos on the subject. Go check him out. Uh, where you can clearly see on Metacritic that they were just getting five star review bombs. Uh, uh, the word I think "amazing" was used over and over again. There's another word that was used to over amazing. and over. Amazing. Where you can absolutely tell uh, it was getting botted. So that that happens on both sides. I just think, well, I think it's more likely. And this, as I said, at Captain Marvel, what's more likely? Okay, is is there some Russian out there buying up bot farms <laughs> to negatively review Star Wars to, according to one access media source, so division in the United States, or would it be the company that stands to profit from the show doing good? Hmm. I mean, just use logic, okay? That Hollywood doesn't, but you can. You can. And it's much more likely that somebody at Disney would hire a bot farm. Yes, I'm accusing them of it. Absolutely. Why not? Uh, it's pure speculation, but why wouldn't you hire a bot farm to pump up your series that you know sucks, that you need people to watch anyway? So it, it, at the very least, it'll probably counteract any costs by bringing people in and going, hmm, maybe there is maybe there is being attacked, making everything a movement, mm -hmm. right? Making everything a cause. Like, you are fighting Nazis by watching Kenobi. We you resist. are fighting by watching Kenobi. It's so fucking ridiculous, but that's where we're at. I just um, I, th I don't think it's working as well as it used to. You know, it's just not working as well. Look at Derek V. Yeah. This show is nearly unwatchable. I would say completely unwatchable. <laughs> like I would not watch it all. Next one, Heresy. The show is boring. <laughs> like that's just the show is boring. Yes, but there's it's people like, who all of break these. down what happened in the show. There was a lot of those. I mean, uh, in in my video, I just picked the last five. I mean, those are the first five things yep. I saw when I went there. I'm like, I'm just going to pick these. Fine. And the, a lot, uh, you could tell that they had seen the show. I even mixed in a positive one, uh, which I'm sure was real. I'm absolutely sure. <laughs> totally. uh, Chris, was there anything that you liked in this episode? Um, No. I mean, <laughs> literally <laughs> not... I cannot think of one thing. I mean, even like you and McGregor, who's normally good as that character, seemed like an idiot. Like it was just like this is not this is not the Obi Wan Kenobi, the character he created in, in the prequels. No. It's it's just everything about this is so weak. I'm embarrassed for them, you know. And it clearly to me exposes that that I think Deborah Chow is not the genius director she was called no. because she did the best episodes of The Mandalorian, you know. It's it just exposes that whatever whatever the vision is of the team that created this, I feel sad. And I, I'm also kind of embarrassed. We were talking before the stream started. Like you'll always see like some mainstream media person, you know, kind of like in a snide way, just like, oh, those people who like Star Wars, I, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, they're right now yeah. to, to mock people who like this stuff. If you genuinely like this Disney Channel series that looks like every episode was shot in a week. Um, and just like, oh, we got to we got to hurry and get things done. That's why we got to do all the action in a master shot. We can't do anything dynamic with it. And also original ideas. That's nah. let's throw in a back to tank. Let's throw in infiltrating a facility. Just everything you've seen before in Star Wars. And then just, you know, do a lesser version of it. I mean, there's really nothing in this episode. I can't think. And, and also what's it building towards? You know, it could, is there some sort of confrontation they're building towards because it doesn't feel like it. The confrontation should truly be between Kenobi and Anakin, Darth Vader. That's not where the conflict, the conflict is this character Reva that we don't really care about all that much. And she's not a fully, she just, she doesn't work in it. Um, 
you know, and of course, you know, Lucasfilm would say, um, uh, they would call me a name for even thinking that I don't like her character. Yeah. And I say, this is coming from the same fans that were begging the same fans that probably, you know, think this series is weak. We're dying, dying for Lando to please be in the sequels. Just put, just give us Lando in a couple scenes. We want yeah. Billy D. Williams. We want to see Billy D. Williams, please. I mean, fans were begging for that and um, it ended up happening. It was whatever. I, th I thought Billy D. Williams was fine. I mean, he wasn't given much to do. Um, no, much like everybody it, else in those movies. Just like everybody. Yeah. All the legacy characters like, yeah, don't worry. We'll just kill you in this one. And uh, we'll you know, now we're gonna, now we're gonna kill you and uh, the you're already dead but I guess we'll just kill you on screen now like it's just it's it's embarrassing it's 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 just it's horrific and this could have been a really interesting story getting into Darth Vader's head he communicates with the Emperor maybe Darth Vader has some other alternative motives an alternative motive that yeah. was what was dropped in the Empire Strikes Back was. Darth Vader teaming up with his son to overthrow the Emperor. That was like something that was suggested and dropped in Return of the Jedi. And Gary Kurtz brings it up in an interview I did with him years ago. He didn't he didn't like that. He didn't like that they kind of just dropped that like plot thread. It's way more interesting intrigue. Like is Vader questioning, you know, like his position? Like I want to get into Vader's head. I want to get into Kenobi's head. But no, we have all these distractions with these characters that like young Leia, she's like any kid of that age, uninteresting. Um, you know, like just not, she's just a kid and uh, I, I don't know. They're just, just, yeah, this, they should this, just retitle the series, the adventures of young Leia. Exactly. Yeah. This, this show should have, should have been Ben Kenobi introspective about the fall of the Jedi. And maybe we get flashbacks if we want to get, you know, Obi-Wan and Anakin back together, flashbacks of the clone wars. We could see them a little bit do some de-aging or whatever you see that, but it's mostly introspection about his failure and him trying to take care of Luke from a distance. And who, who knows, like you said, unforgiven, he's seeing people die and he's got to focus on protecting Luke. And then he's got to fight some people that are trying to come after Luke or something who knows. And then you could also, if you want to bring Darth Vader in, if you want to get those member berries, you do a side separate story, like an AB plot of the entire show of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader. You see where Darth Vader is. What is he doing? How is he, like you're seeing, like you said just now, what is his thought, inner thoughts? Is he planning on something behind his uh, the Emperor's back? Like, it would be great to see the introspection of both those characters separately. They don't ever meet, okay? We all knew this. The second they made this show, we were like, they better not meet because that is canon breaking. I don't care how they can justify it now. I have I've had friends that try to justify it to me. It's like, oh well, it kind of makes sense and, to me. No, 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 no. It does not make sense. The, it, we all know it doesn't make sense. It, it the thing is this: it could have been the most intense. Like when you think back to like some scenes, like from I'm just talking about like movies from the '70s, like Godfather, uh, and or just some really good like you know, uh, Scorsese directed you know, yep. mafia film. Some of the best scenes are yeah. scenes where people are just talking. They're so intense and you're like, holy, sh you know, like, like there just could have been some amazing stuff. Like there could have been a buildup. There could have been a buildup to that. What? They are going to fight and then they don't fight. But Darth Vader utters a line. He says, somehow chases him back to Tatooine, finds out he's there and utters a line and says, if you ever leave this planet, I will kill you if you ever leave this planet. And then just, that's how the show should have ended. And then it's a buildup to a fight that doesn't happen, but the drama is so palpable. It would have been amazing rather than some mm -hmm. cheap ass, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have yeah. like, like who, who's teaching them to do the sword play, the sword, the, the, the lightsaber stuff with Obi-Wan was so just like, it was like how a kid plays with a lightsaber, not how uh -huh. a Jedi. I you love how you like, you, Chris, I love how you set that up, by the way. Yeah. That was all oh, that would yeah. be if where Darth Vader finds Obi Wan and maybe they meet and Darth Vader just says, "Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, kill if you, you if you leave, if you leave this planet, mm. I will kill you." That's fucking. I, awesome. I could see that. Like that was the drama the potential of mercy in Vader that you wouldn't ever think that was there. Uh, and yeah, that's I think that's. But just between the two of them, I like, like it. Yeah, I like that. Um, it's almost. 
you could even you could even cheat. You could even cheat and have a vision where Vader is thinking about he's sort of going over, you know, his lightsaber duel and where he made mistakes and have a fantasy in his head of Obi-Wan and him fighting and him just chopping Obi-Wan and killing him. Yeah. You could yeah. you could show that in a vision. Yeah. It's a vision. He's sort of like thinking when, when I when I see Kenobi, this is what I'm going to do. And the whole buildup is that he's going to murder him and he decides not to like, you know, there, and there's there's just there's so much potential that to me, this is what tells me these people in the story group are are weak ass. And and I just think that they're weak. We're not, there's not, we're not, it's not a room full of Mario Puzos is what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like Mario Puzo, who wrote The Godfather, who came up with the story for the original Superman directed by Richard yep. Donner, which mm, Gary, yep. I've heard you say, probably one of the greatest superhero movies of all time. I agree yep. with you. Like you, you believed it. And, and that um, real quick aside, I saw the trailer for Black Adam. It looks like shit. And I don't, <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I love, I love The Rock actually. I really like The Rock. He looks I don't need dumb. More. Fine. He he looks I, dumb. I, He's fine as like an action hero and something that's not very serious. Light. Okay, fine. I'll be entertained. But he looked stupid as that character. He just looks bad. Like um, God. Just I'm thinking back at like I some know. really horrible. He's not a good movies. guy. I, he does. Yeah. He, Black Adam is a villain. Okay. If right. you want to make anti-hero later, you got to build up for to that. But like he's. Fuck, it's, it's DC. They want to do everything at f- breakneck speed. Get right to the yes, to the end. East Richard Donner was one of the greatest directors of all yeah. time. Of all time, he made yeah. you believe. He made you believe it with freaking ropes and wires and in cheap, the seventies. Like, yeah. In the seventies, the effects were cheap, but you hey, believed it. Christopher Reeves you performed. Around. You were around. Superman the movie was as big as Star Wars when it came out. It was huge, fucking as popular. Huge. Yep. It played all summer in nineteen seventy eight. It played all summer. I, I got, I, 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 I saw it, I don't know, God, probably five, six times that summer. It was just incredible. One of the best scores that John Williams has ever done. Like, and, and the effects were, I will say this, that a lot of the model effects and in the end were pretty cheap, but same thing with a movie like Logan's Run. But I'll say, looking back, what worked? The actors, the actors, the thing that sells it is Michael York and Jenny Agutter, their, their romance. And even like yeah. Margot Kidder, Christopher Reeve are so good in it. But you you sort of overlooked you overlook the bad stuff, you know. Were you at Comic Con when Donner did when they did release the Donner cut of Superman two? And they I, did the I wasn't thing. there, but I do have that cut. Yeah. Uh, oh. So what happened? You were there. Find that panel, dude, and watch it. It is glorious. So they show all the what the, everything they were going to put in. And they told you the whole. They broke down the entire story behind why it didn't get made. And then if you see that Donner cut, and it, like there's another universe where the Donner cut came out, right? And uh, mm-hmm. like Superman's, the whole trajectory of superhero films would have changed completely. It would have started sooner. You know, Superman yeah. two, uh, we liked it as kids, the Richard Lester version, but it's shit. Okay, it's absolute it, it's, shit. It's cheesy with cool it's- moments in it. You know, and and Donner cuts all that cheesy shit out, including the entire beginning, right, where they're not in Paris, yeah. France. They, they, it's 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 um it's Zod and Ursa and Non uh get you know get released with superman you know diverting one of the nuclear weapons from superman one that's how they get out and it changes the whole trajectory of the fucking film dude it's it's so good it's so good if you don't have the donner cut out there and you haven't seen it go see the donner cut yeah yeah i i i have the I have the blu-ray of that it's 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 awesome but um what was really bugged me about superman 2 were not the performances of the main actors. It was the performances of all the extras. They were yeah. so bad. I, I mean, just remember cringing at like, you know, someone gets an ice cream in the face and it's just like, it's just like really dumb sort of gags. It's the that guy they set who up directed in the-, the Beatles films. Right, right. <laughs> it's so, it's so yeah. cheesy. And the other thing that bugged, that bugged me about it, there's one shot where Terrence Stamp takes like a rifle and he has to shift his weight. You can see it's, heavy it's a real rifle and he sort of tosses it i'm thinking if you're super powered you're not shifting your weight to pick up a rifle. yeah dude no make up well i mean like a toothpick. yes i remember yeah. i i i remember uh, like i watched yeah. that movie five or six seven eight ten times in the theater even though like i still thought it was like god because it was still there's still you know you had superman fighting super beings and in those fights which were largely directed by richard donner that was fucking mm-hmm. awesome 
you know, Ursa throwing the, yeah. you know, just the buses and all that. I loved it. And I don't care how cheesy it looked. I was like, that's what, as a comic book fan, I've been dying for that shit. I was like, oh my God, thank God we're going to see a super battle. And Sarah Douglas as Ursa was one of my favorites, by the way. Oh, she's so hot. I'm sorry. She's, she's so, hot. so hot. When I was a kid, I'm like, oh my God, that th those thigh high. Whenever I see someone cosplay as that character at like a convention, I'm just like, I have to get a picture. I have to get a picture. That's uh, yeah. yeah. We could talk about yeah. that on a separate stream. Mm -hmm. We can. We could talk about how she flirted with me at a comic con. <laughs> oh really? Nice. Oh my god! Oh, it was a fucking one of the best days of my life. <laughs> I was like, yeah, awesome. I was younger and prettier, but uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. I've got a picture of her kissing me on the cheek. Yeah, Let's and and don't ever wash that cheek. And, I hope and, you and uh, the at Vic, what's his name? Oh, how the guy who played Non is grabbing her tit <laughs> in the picture. It's so funny, dude. I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, uh, all the good old days. Uh, yeah. I got me too, and she got me too, all in one picture. It was great. That's great. Uh, yeah, me too. Pop, yourself. Pop. There you go. Uh, <laughs> damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> i'm gonna go back up to the room i need a break take a yeah. nap okay. uh dun, 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 dun. i'm trying to figure out i don't know if there's any new doctor i saw some people talk about maybe they just want to talk about doctor because it's been a while um i'm not Ugh. confident i'm not confident at all it looks like the 60th might be okay you know it's got david Tennant. it's got Catherine tate i don't know if it's going to have shooty in it or not i heard that's questionable i'm not paying attention once i heard the announcement i i've said it from the beginning everything rides on the announcement of the 14th doctor and the announcement came and i went okay bye that was it i mean like <laughs> yeah you can hold out hope but like i i'm better with i'll be surprised if it's good if it's good and people go no no really come back it's good and it's good fine but i'm not gonna hold out like no it, the the show's old. They just had three awful seasons. It's very hard to go back. Okay, let's look at the recent examples. James Cameron went back to Terminator. How did that work out? Ridley Scott went back to Alien. How did that work out? How do you think it's going to work out for Russell T Davies almost two decades later, fifteen years later, with Doctor Who, and and a Russell T Davies who's highly politicized now who's seen as a savior can do whatever he wants with no VBC restriction. What do you think he's going to do? It's going to go woke and it's going to suck. It's going to be sad. I, I just, you know, I, I Disney, like, like people, uh, God bless you fans. Don't ever lose hope. But like, seriously, people had a lot of hope for, for Obi-Wan. And I was thinking like, Oh, well, you know, Deborah Chow. I believe I was, I was listening to the Deborah Chow hype. Uh, she's not very good. She's not very good. Yes. Disney's not very good. If you're a creative, and maybe it's not her fault, I don't know. But what what's starting to happen, and I've talked about this a little bit. I'm going to talk about it a lot more in the future. But creatives are veering away from Disney because Disney has a very bad reputation of working with them, and they're starting to understand that oh, maybe doing this Marvel or Disney Star Wars thing isn't good for my career because it isn't. It'll hurt your career it'll hurt your career because you know what you're going to look like you're going to look like you were cast and not hired because that's mm -hmm. what you are deborah chow was cast because she's an asian female wasn't was not hired on her skill i wish i wish that were not true i wish that were not true but that that's disney you can blame disney don't get on me about that that is fucking disney they're the ones who make we have an asian female director we have female director blah, 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 blah. you know how about just hiring the best director yeah if it's deborah chow great and think about when she was hired it was during the stop asian hate campaigns yep. going all over the place so that's exactly what happened the eternals eternals chloe yeah chloe Zhao was was she has she, she fucking did one she's that's not even her kind of movie okay um really overrated really overrated and eternals i'm getting eternals vibes from absolutely everything including rings of power from star wars from everything mm -hmm. uh if if a company is confident in their product chris gore they like to mm -hmm. show it off They're, they like can't wait they're like 
restraining themselves. We can't, we can't show everything, but we can put a, you know, a picture out here, a clip out here. You're going nuts showing that shit. You have to nowadays. That's the way, that's the way the game is played now. Uh, you don't withhold stuff. And when, when you're withholding stuff to the last fucking minute, mm, suspect, or as the kids say, sus, but I'm not a kid, so I'm not going to say it. Real sus. Real sus. Uh, Lira for $5 on the donation side says it's becoming a chore. I don't know whether I have the heart to watch anymore. Then don't like really don't. I was holding on for a clone wars flashback. Uh, what a waste of Hayden's handsome face, right? We're four episodes in and we've seen Hayden Christensen. How much mm. in a flashback for like a second. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It could have, he's not in the suit. This, obviously. It's this is what I was saying before them. about this, this show being so uncreative is that they could have done anything and they did all the obvious things and didn't yeah. even do them well. Right. They didn't even do them well. Like the obvious things you would do. It's like, this is everything I expected it to be coming from Disney, but coming from a more creative director, you would do flashbacks to the clone wars. You'd have Obi-Wan having nightmares. You'd have him thinking about Padme. Maybe you don't have Natalie Portman, or maybe it's like from the whatever, but like visions of her use footage from the movies, whatever, all of that I'm sure turned into cost things, right? You'd have to get that whatever but like there's so much creatively you could have done with this and it could have said something interesting and it didn't it could have shown darth vader and like what has he learned in this decade now that has passed what has he learned what has he become who how is he different mm. yes we see his exterior who is he on the inside no one bothered to ask those questions who was writing the show it's it's utter garbage and dismissible and forgettable. So and it shouldn't be because it, it had all the potential, so much potential. So there you go. Yep. Uh, have you seen all of the bad reviews on uh, movie uh, it, IMDb? So many ones and twos. This is worse than I expected. I haven't looked at IMDb because I I don't know I. I I've just never thought to look at IMDb. That that must be bad though, because I always thought IMDb skewed a little more positive for Hollywood in general. Uh, because I think to review you have to be on, you have to be a member of the site. Yeah, you do. Correct. I believe so. I, I had to, to become check. so I could edit like whatever somebody put up about me. Um, which you can do, right? If you identify yourself and if, cause somebody put up a IMDB, like it's cool. I got no problem with it. They have, I don't know if it's a joke or whatever, but it's not anything bad. Uh, they, they got a couple things wrong about my, my background, which I'm good. I'm very glad. Like, that's why I'm not correcting that. Cause that, that uh, puts out misinformation about some of my personal stuff. Um, Colt Demon for ten dollars in honor of Yas Queen Month. I'll ask you all this: uh, Which franchise look uh, took its hardest up the bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> My answer is Star Wars. Um, uh, I still say it's Doctor Who. I, I have a top five video that uh, the boys worked on. Very good job, by the way, Terry. Beautiful video. Beautiful video. I think. Uh, Doctor Who remains number one because they went into uh, his past and changed the first Doctor, who is now, according to a comic, Doctor Ruth, the first female <laughs> Doctor of Color, played mm. by Ruth. Um, and that is fucking vandalization beyond any of Star Wars' wildest dreams. You can come, you know what, for you. Star Wars ends with Return of the Jedi. And anything after it is just nothing. And you can go read your EU books, which are so much better than this, based on just what I've heard. And the comics from Dark Horse are so much better than this. Uh, so you could you still have that. But it's number two, for sure, as far as screwed up franchises. It's a very close number two. And they're they're shooting for number one. They're Disney's trying. They're trying, man. They're trying. I might have to redo my list if they keep going this way. If they remake the original trilogy, then it, it that'll be it. Number one, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's clean. And Matthew Hammerhead for $10. Again, this is on the donation side, circumventing Mama Susan. Here is some money uh, to go to Fuel City Tacos in Dallas and get some elotes, hey, hey. a.k.a. corn in a cup. Okay, okay. Uh, which is amazing. I know what that is. Uh, their tacos are good, too. Okay, done. I will set aside that $10 when I go to Dallas in eight days. We'll go to Fuel City Tacos. We'll try them out. Not, have you been to Fuel City Tacos? I don't think I've been to that taco spot, but well, it sounds okay. damn good. And we have to take Krista Nova for biscuits and gravy. That's Krista right. Adam. You were in the chat last night, right? Yeah. Made she's event. Like, I've never had biscuits and gravy. That's insane. Oh my God. I mean, I've lived in the you know, Southwest forever, so oh, <laughs> it's yeah. just crazy to me. Like what Ripa was saying, like that is just something you just have. It's like sweet tea. You don't have sweet tea everywhere, which blew my mind. I was like, what? What? You don't have sweet tea? Ice sweet tea? Come on. Yeah. No, the, we got to give it to Chris. There's a reason I came to Texas, Chris. Baby. And Sorry, that man. reason is uh, freedom, uh, Second Amendment. Uh, and there's politicians here who will fight back once in a while and to, to specifically vote against Beto, uh, whose name is Francis. Uh, but I also came here because there's a lot of California un amenities. I'm still in the West, right? So people are like come yeah. to Florida. It's like nah, couldn't get tacos in Florida or good tacos. Yeah, like I know far. I can get good tacos in fucking Texas. So yes, that factored in to moving here. I'm like mm, Tex Mex, good. Okay, I can I can live there. It's close enough. It can close enough. I love Tex Mex, but yeah, if you've oh, I've good. never tried. I I can't wait to go to San Diego to try this carne asada. Yeah, burrito, I got bro. nothing against Tex Mex. Like San Diego food, Mexican food is superior, but it's in San Diego in California, which, which makes it bad because you have to go there and you might you have to go to one of those on, or you might have to listen to somebody being Californian, you know, which I tried to exercise all of mine out as much as possible. But uh, <laughs> I'm so used to ignoring that. I don't care. Fuck it. You know, I'm just I, I, I'm, I, I, I'm always kind of like just being a nerd growing up was kind of a misfit. So. In California, yep. kind of a misfit. I don't think the way a lot of people here think, and I mostly they're full of shit. Um, so if you kind of keep that that filter on, I think I, you know that's helped me survive at least. Well, that's so. that's the weird thing, Chris. Right? Because I was watching Stranger Things season four, and I'm enjoying it, and I really like how they hit on the um, you know those uh, metal kids who got uh, jailed and falsely accused for a murder they didn't commit. Yeah, um, I do actually really like that aspect. West of it, Mem is it the West? Uh, God dang it! Help me out, chat. It's the West something three. Is it the West? Yeah. It was these three kids. They uh, were in the fucking metal and stuff, and they got railroaded. That satanic panic. Satan stuff. Yeah, like was just complete crap. But that, they got a guy in there who looks like my my buddy Ronnie Montgomery from high school. Who I used to like get high with all the time, the guy who turned me on to fucking Dio, uh, because you know I was still Did like you see his jacket, man. His well, they, they jacket, Dio, his Dio jacket. Dio oh man, State, I want one of those. Dio Estate gave that to Stranger Things, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah, dude, so I want that like, legit jean jacket Dio so State. bad. And like, uh, you know, I was a snobby little punk rocker, and this guy likes no fucking Dio is the greatest singer of all time. I'm like, what? He's like one of those screaming metal dudes. He's like, shut up and listen, punk. And I listened. I went, Just okay, you're right. Down. Yep. Listen to the guns. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we were freaks, Chris. We were the freaks. So, I mean, I, I totally get it, you know? And I liked it. That's my one gripe with the show. Not enough Eddie. I want more Eddie. He was really cool. I liked the Like, the first couple episodes had a lot of him in it. And then, obviously, whenever he had to go on the run, you know. Well, I like the show as much. But yeah, the, I they... wanted more. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting character that they put in the yeah. West Memphis Three. Thank you, the West Memphis Three. Look into it. It's fucking. Uh, it's not. It's not a good story. It's really not. It's uh, not a great story about our justice system. Um, back to the sci-fi stuff. Uh, yeah, I like Stranger. I'm going to watch the rest of it tonight. I've been slow because I'm watching it with the misses. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to watch certain shows with the misses, or I get divorced. So, how many episodes do you have left? I have two. I have three and a half. Okay. Yeah, uh, I, I really. I, like I might have snuck in one, but I can't say it publicly, or I'll get in trouble. <laughs> um, I I've been watching, uh, dude. Since you were over, 
we watched two UFO documentaries this is before the infamous fucking Star Wars tweet that I'm like, shit, we got to make a fucking yeah. video on this. Now. <laughs> God damn, I was not going to make a Kenobi. Damn video Star all, Wars. If gotta it be like, dumb. But like, uh, you know, we're, we went down the paranormal rabbit hole. I'm like, oh, Garrett's like, I've never seen this, this UFO doc phenomenon. Yeah, it was great. Fucking great by James Fox. Then we watched the other one he did previous to that. And then since you've left, I've been just down the rabbit hole, dude. I've, <laughs> I've watched all the Skinwalker Ranch series. And nice. I went back and watched the movie and, and I know all this shit, and I watched it again because uh, it was fun. Uh, Love paranormal and, stuff, man. For one hundred, I, I do too. And there's, we're studying for a reason, by the way. Did you see that article I sent about the kid that was lost yeah. in Montana? Yeah. Oh, that was awesome! Fucking finish to that story. So this little three year old, three year old boy, Chris, gets lost mm -hmm. in Montana, and there's that missing four one one. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, Chris. Look into it if yeah. you haven't. By Chalides. Oh freakiest shit you'll ever listen to uh it's about missing people in uh america's national parks now he's expanded it and done eight books but this started back in 2016 by accident he's he's an he's an old bigfoot researcher he kind of like and he and this took him to another place so he was an ex-cop for 20 years bigfoot researcher goes to a national park gets approached off the record by two national parks guys going you know what there's something, you know, you kind of skirt around it. You're into the Bigfoot thing, but we're going to take you somewhere else. There is a lot of people who are missing at national parks under very strange circumstances, and they they discount all the animal attacks and people who right. commit suicide. There's a very specific, uh, it's like nine things. It's a criteria. It's a criteria. Sure. You got to hit like most of those nine things to be strange, Okay. So there's a lot of very strange disappearances in our parks where people are right behind you. You're like walking in a line of people. There's five people. And the person last in line, you turn around, he's there. 30 seconds later, they're gone forever without a trace. Never seen again. And it's and it's a lot. A and, lot. And then they found out that the, the national parks aren't keeping track of missing people like at all. Or they're not what? public about it. Yeah, they're not public about it. And, well, yeah, and they don't have the resources to do it. They're not connected. There's not like a connected uh, resource for like finding well, if people are missing. And... They're a federal entity all of themselves. And uh, then they started roadblocking David Polites. They're like, yeah, you can get the right. free get, get FOIA, request, close. FOIA request, but you're gonna, it's going to cost you $100,000. And he's like, what? Uh, so he goes down the rabbit hole. He writes these things and he doesn't come to conclusions right away. He just starts documenting cases with evidence. So he's not saying it's Bigfoot or UFOs. He's just going, no, this shit's weird. You have little kids who will get, who will disappear from right behind somebody, which happens. Little kids do that, but then they're found 3000 feet up missing their shoes in an area that was searched by mm -hmm. the search team prior the week before or the two days before. So it's, and then, then oh. there's adults and there's the adults, there's the hunters that they, and, and one of the criteria is they end up in a place where they had previously searched or their shoes are found. That's all. That's often one of the things their shoes are found, but that's it. Now that's a hypothermia thing. Okay. That is a hypothermia thing to take off your shoes. But some, some of the cases it wasn't cold. It wasn't cold. So it's really weird. Uh, they've come to some weird conclusions about it, which I like. But uh, it's definitely happening. Like, be careful when you go out there. They 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 say don't be the last in line. Be armed. Have a transponder. All that good yep. stuff. But to make a long story short, or long, uh, there's a kid who went missing in Montana under these exact circumstances. But they fucking found him. So sometimes they do find the people, and when they do, they don't know what happened. Uh, you know, a lot exhaustion will do that to you. But then when they recover, they still don't know what happened. So they found this little boy in montana he was fucking three it was 40 degrees he was missing for two days and he yep. survived he survived which was rare really rare it's, it's crazy well, there's a, some of those stories too whenever they they get lost and they're lost for like a week and then they show up totally fine fed clean sometimes yeah it's weird no it no wounds or anything and they're like it's yeah weird. it's weird it's very strange very very strange so yeah it's called That's missing 411 you know some of the people have been found, you know, like uh, one of the cases from his documentary from 2016, like there was a, uh, you know, a, a brain damaged woman who went missing. They just found her 
Uh, but the thing was like her mom was in the bathroom, a public bathroom with her, walked out with her, turned her head for a second and then turned around. She was gone. Mm. Nobody saw her. Nothing. Just poof. then they find her bones, you know, miles away, seven years later. It's weird. Very, yeah, it's very weird. Now that could be murder, but, uh, a lot of these cases, it just can't be murder because it's just too far out there. So you're not going to have some serial killer standing behind a bush, uh, you know, 30 miles in from the nearest road waiting for, to get you. So, that, yeah, it's, it's creepy uh, and it's good. But uh, I'll get back to the pop code. Don't get me down going down this rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah, I know. But- <laughs> I'm watching the shit out of this stuff. I was watching it up like two o'clock in the morning last night. I'm watching Skinwalker Ranch, which is so good. Um, Daniel. For one hundred dollars, thank you for always fighting the good fight. You are unwavering and a beacon for all of us true believers. I'll count myself lucky if I get a chance to shake your hand in Dallas. I will be lucky. I, oh God, I hope you're there, Daniel. I want to meet you, dude. Please, man. I really want to meet you. So uh, no, like if you see, I've come to the meetup uh, at Gators on on at six o'clock. I mean, it's, there's no charge. We will never charge you for meetups. Okay. I'll speak for myself. I will never charge you for meetups ever, ever, ever. That's no way. No way. Never. Uh, and so, and Jeremy and I and Ryan and quarter black, will be running around the con. If you see us, like, please come up to us and bug us, please. It's yeah. Fun. I always get messages of people going like, Oh, I didn't, I saw you, but I didn't want to come up to you. I don't want to bother you. Dude, bother me. Not, it's not, not a bother at all <laughs> like, block to everybody. Please. You're not bothering us ever. Okay. Uh, it'll be fun. That's why I'm there. I'm, I, you know what? I don't, I don't need to be buying any more toys or comics at the comic con. So <laughs> I just want to <laughs> I don't both. know. There's a patch on your wall that's out of camera that needs to be filled. There's a patch. Stop. You know what? <laughs> I got I got, uh, I got a one six scale um a Captain Jack for jo- I was like, I got so inspired by the justice for Johnny Depp. I'm like, you know, I don't have a Captain oh, Jack. Nice. Here. So I got a Captain Jack for Johnny. Those are really great too, because all the accessories that's and awesome, like, it's yeah. so oh, detailed. I got one from one of the shitty movies, but yeah, the details better on them. So for on yeah. Stranger Tides, which is that's the one I worked on. I think I worked on one of them. What was four? What was str- Stranger was Tides? That was Blackbeard, right? Four? Chris, do you remember? He, Cause I, knew you, I, I don't know. I don't Whatever remember. the fourth it's, one was, that's the one I worked on. Yeah. The Blu-ray. I worked on the Blu-ray. Okay. Um, four was uh Stranger Tides with Blackbeard. And then five was the yeah, one yeah. with uh, that's the one I worked on. Cortez or whatever his name was. Those movies blend together to me. So. Yeah. No, th- there's only there's there's one good pirates movie. Okay. The first one, which was fucking excellent, man. Just great. I, I like the trilogy. It it definitely is not as good as the first one. The first one is phenomenal. The second and third one are like, eh, but I'm still like, I kind of like the world still. And then the fourth and fifth one are just ridiculously bad. <laughs> Johnny is the yeah. only thing that is good, even remotely, in those I didn't even watch the fifth one. <laughs> yeah, it's very forgettable. Uh but uh Thank you, Daniel, for the one hundred dollars. We appreciate you, and uh, see you in Dallas, buddy. See you in Dallas. See you there. We got Matthew Hammond for five dollars. Says, "What were uh, some of your favorite second tier TV shows that you thought were good? I liked Invisible Man on Sci Fi. Oh, Invisible Man, yeah, yes, Ooh, yeah. My wife loved that show too. Yes. Um, I I like Robin Hood on the BBC." If you ever watched that, that was, I think it came out like 2011 or something, maybe even earlier than that, but it had, uh, it had Thor and Oakenshield in it as Guy of Gisborne. That was a good show. I mean, I'm sure it was cheesy, but I loved it anyways. And then the Three Musketeers on the BBC, Oscar, also really good. That came out like 2015. That was a great show. Dresden Files was one season, loved it. Remember the Dresden Files, Jim Butcher series? They they should still do well. They can't do it because it'd be a white male lead. So, uh, Farscape's not second tier, twenty first century monk. It is first tier. Farscape is first tier TV. Uh, Dune miniseries is second tier. Is there any is there any Ugh. second tier sci fi shows that you like, Chris Gore? Uh, I don't know that Dune miniseries. I thought was it looked like a filmed play. I'm not a fan of it. I mean, William Hurt <laughs> is 
fine. Um, some of the actors are fine, but it just looked too cheap for me. And it's just the books are so present in my in my head. I could I couldn't. It was it was tough to get through. But look, David Lynch's movie is kind of you know it, people are taking a second look at it. There's like a there's like a three hour 4K version that some fan edited together from using footage from like a Japanese laser disc, which I happen to have. Where, where and, is it? It's it's on YouTube. I'll, I'll find it for you if you want. I'll put it. Find it for me. It's, yeah, it's I great. That. I just watched that. I watched that cut. It's a cut. It's a, a, most of the deleted scenes, not all of them, because they didn't finish the effects for all of them. But it looks so good. I can't believe a fan put that together. And so people are, and, and you know, I like the new Dune as well. I, you know, we'll see. We'll see what's going to happen in part two. If it if it goes where I think it's going to go, and it's accurate to the book, I think it's going to piss a lot of people off. But because it's not it's not Star Wars. It's not Star Wars, really. You know, you know what's terrible is like I I find videos about Dune more entertaining than the actual movie. <laughs> well, there's a really good documentary. Uh, there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a really good documentary. That, I, I gotta tell you, this is a really good documentary that just came out about the making of the original Dune, David Lynch, and it just it's I've never first of all footage I've never seen. It's a feature length documentary. I'll have to look it up, but I just, I, I just, it's sort of an innocuous name, but it's, I believe it's being put out by Arrow Video and they put out a lot of like classic film stuff. This doc is so incredible. It talks about how Sean Young was cast because she kind of blew her audition and then they met her up on the plane and got along with her and like shows like, like VHS footage from that time in the eighties. And it, it showed like how like, David Lynch just like he didn't want to do Star Wars. His whole thing was like, I think Star Wars is lame. I want to do whatever the opposite of Star Wars is doing. That's what we're doing, right? Like it was just more organic. And um, it, they shot it at this studio in Mexico that was just kind of crazy. Like just uh, it's I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I'll find it. Look it up and find, find it. it. Like I like, I like yeah. David Lynch. I mean, I don't like everything he does, but right. uh, I like, yeah, you know, it's weird. But this, this 4K Properly version weird. That the that documentary, I think it's maybe on their YouTube or on their uh Aero streaming service. So, anyways, I just yeah, yeah it, it, it's just made me relook, um, uh, relook at okay. it. I just finished viewing the entire series of Stargate Atlanta, such a great series from beginning to end. Stargate SG1, Stargate Atlanta says, uh, CGI still holds up. Uh, it makes you appreciate when TV studios put in the money to make it okay. Good, Matthew Hammond, you're right for five dollars. There is no better. Let me find Nerd Cookies tweet, which is actually going to make it in my next video because I think it just shows the contrast of how far we've gone backwards in culture. It's a very, it's a very simple tweet. Uh, Hail Nerd Cookies, by the way. I, she, I know she loves Dune. She probably got really mad. I, I, I subscribe to her channel. When I said yeah. that I like Dune videos more, I, I thought the movie was fine. Um, I wanted more of like the Baron. <laughs> I was like really into the Baron. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I thought that was just some like dark, crazy, weird shit that, that I like. But uh, here we go. There. That's how much entertainment has gone backwards in the last mm -hmm. 20 years. When you have Peter Jackson's Weta which is one of the greatest, or he just sold it, but was one of the greatest organizations associated with film better than ILM. They get, they became better. 100%. ILM better by stealing all their shit, by the way. Um, and then you've got on the right, those are supposed to be elves on the right. Those are supposed to be fucking elves. What are these costumes, <laughs> man? So, okay, you're, you're relatively, like, you're very casual when it comes to Lord of the Rings, Chris. Uh, what looks like a better yeah. elf? Is it the left or the right? Honest answer. It's fine. If you don't give a fuck, that's fine. Well, uh, the low, the lower left, I would say, yeah, looks good. Uh, but the others, I don't know. I don't know. On the right, just looks. I'll, it I'll looks like it makes his dark eyebrows bother me, but that's about it. It's just it just looks like generic fantasy to me. And also the fact that we haven't seen another trailer that gives us some glimpse at the story they intend to tell so that we can be engaged in that story. Like, I, 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 I don't know, man. It's just, again, I feel like fantasy, sci-fi, horror, 
genre films more than more than anything genre films and tv shows are best when they have a shepherd and someone who cares not made by a corporation current star wars made by a corporation amazon lord of the rings corporation these aren't made by people they're made by committee and when you have a visionary like a peter jackson or like a george lucas i'm not saying that either of them are perfect in everything that they do right i mean george was criticized the prequels were too different than the original star wars right and you know the hobbit received criticism that hd that thing where he tried to like get movie theaters to like we're going to do this new 60 frame it didn't work i saw it it looked bad horrible um, Look like yeah, a soap opera. Yeah. Having said that, when you have a person like that, that you identify a, a specific creator is connected to something. There, there, there's something in there, whatever you want to call it, ghost in the machine, a soul. It has a soul. It means something. That's why it's like, you know, the Mandalorian is probably the best of the Disney Star Wars. I mean, I would say it is the best of the Disney Star Wars in the sense that yeah. at least there was someone like a John Favreau. And by the way, people forget John Favreau was going was one of the directors that was up for episode seven. He was uh, they went with JJ and I don't even know how aggressively John Favreau fought for that. I feel like, you know, whatever the Star Wars sequels were going to be would have been way better under Favreau. Um, I just get the sense that he's an old school Star Wars fan who gives a shit and he cares about the legacy characters more. I, you know, so I don't know. I, I feel like that's what's lacking with all this stuff. If you want to identify like, why does this not feel right? It's like, well, there, there's no Gene Roddenberry, George Lucas, Peter Jackson, James mm -hmm. Cameron. And I'm not saying any of those people are perfect. James Cameron slapped his name on a lot of bad Terminator movies. You know, there's two good terminator movies and there you are but like there needs to be a creative visionary who guides a, a, you know shepherds this series towards something meaningful beyond product and when i look at this stuff i just think it looks flat it doesn't look lived it doesn't look it looks like everything i've seen of the amazon lord of the rings just looks generic fantasy and no, the fact that, yeah 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 boring I mean, generic Exactly. I wonder if they're going to be I'm fairly. They're going to be at Comic Con in San Diego for sure. They have oh, to. Be, yeah. Right? No. There's going to be a Lord of the Rings, uh, supposedly a Lord of the Rings experience outside of Comic Con. Hmm. Well, you don't need a badge for that. You can just wait Guess in we'll line. Go for check that days. out. Nope. Yeah. Oh, we'll check it out. We will check it out for sure. <laughs> uh, there's going to be panels there, uh, but. No, this this rollout is getting it's getting destroyed. Like, like they they know they know. And the thing is, like Amazon, if I was at okay, Amazon, if you're actually listening to me, fire everybody. You need to fire everybody right now. Piss off, you're gone. Bring in Peter Jackson, somebody who can at least coordinate and fix this thing. If you're committed to five seasons, otherwise, otherwise, you're gonna get about three hundred thousand people watching your fucking billion dollar show. <laughs> be, be funny. <laughs> It'll did be I, funny. Did I'm I, gonna get popcorn out and just watch you fail, and uh, that's fine. I don't care. It's not gonna be my fault, but you'll try to blame it on all of us. So we're ready. We're ready. Did I see an article that they had like all five seasons mapped out, including the last shot of yes. the show? Which seems to me, it's like, well, we already know what the last shot's gonna be. I, I can no, predict in a shot right now. Fucking Game of Thrones. And, no, and what's the last shot? No, the last shot is going to be a mirror of the first shot. Same thing with Lost. Lost, you know, began with Jack opening his eyes. It ended with Jack closing his eyes. It'll be something like that. It'll be a bookend. So watch very carefully how the first episode of this show begins, because my prediction is that is exactly how it will end or a contrast what that first shot or first sequence is. And, so, it, and, and it's just... It's going to be filled with contrivances. Oh, I, I know what happens in the first two yeah. episodes. So it's filled oh, with contrivances. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah, and they're also going to mirror Frodo's journey with a female hobbit and a wizard <laughs> right. who can't speak at first. So he, when he falls down to the, from the sky, he can't speak at first, and he uses, like, fireflies to make a constellation to give 
uh, Nori Brandyfoot a location that he needs to go to. So there, you got a spoiler for the second episode. Um, and she's going to teach him how to speak. Elrond goes to a region early because he does go to a region to, to, to help Celebrimbor when Sauron invades, but this is before, like there's no Sauron. Sauron's probably not even in the first season. I don't know that for sure, but he's definitely not in it. He's mentioned a lot. Um, so, so Elrond goes to a to work, to work with non Celebrimbor, by the way, just to Chris, yeah, this, that's Elrond, and that's Elrond. <laughs> <laughs> that's Elrond, and that's Elrond. No, they don't look anything yeah. like this fucking short hair. This like, what's up with the yeah the short hair elves? They do keep, they have a blow dryer in Middle Earth and hairspray? Maybe I like I don't know what the fuck they're doing with that, but uh, yeah, it's it looks terrible. And they're listen, the Tolkien experts going, Tolkien wasn't specific about the hair like this. Yeah, okay, fine, whatever. It's the justification, man. It's the he same was. thing with Darth Vader and Kenobi. There's justification. But I'm waiting to hear that. I'm waiting to hear that he wasn't specific about hair lengths. I, I'm, mm. I'm waiting. I just can't wait. And like, oh, fuck it. Um, it's, it's just. Like, uh, Okay, sure, but it, it, this doesn't look good. Still doesn't look good. I got a video coming out in Lord of the Rings. Don't worry, we're gonna, I can, it's a long one too. Unless you know, Perry has carte blanche to edit it shorter if he needs to, but um, it's gonna be at least fifteen minutes, sixteen minutes long. Um, but with Kenobi, uh, our friend Robert Meyer Burnett makes a great point here uh, from Twitter. Uh, the the Obi Wan Kenobi series is a massive disappointment to say the least Robert uh we could have been a it could have been a tremendous character study it what could have been a, a tremendous character study is just a lackluster retread of tropes we've all seen countless times before and Robert do you know why those tropes are there do you know why Leia is there and not Luke that is woke agenda my friend woke mm. agenda made them make that choice to put Leia in instead of Luke. Do they really yeah. need a tracker to tell them Kenobi? I, I'm sorry. Woke in the general sense, I'll be specific. Intersectional feminism, not even real feminism. Okay. Uh, Galadriel from Tolkien's books is real feminism. Galadriel from Rings of Power is intersectional feminism, if you want to know what the difference is. In other words, penis envy. Um, do they really need a tracker to tell them Kenobi will take Leia back to Alderaan? Seriously? Come on. That is the worst part that we got to talk about. <laughs> that is the worst fucking part. Okay. What? So, in this episode, real quick, Kenobi, injured from being dragged through the fire, gets rescued inexplicably by a loading uh, droid and um, Alaria Sand. I'm just gonna cut. That's how I, I don't know what her name is in the series, and I don't care. Uh, Alaria Sand. You know when she screams when Oberon's head gets popped. Like, ah! uh, you know it's, it's the meme. Uh, you know she's a handsome lady. She's a handsome lady. Very stern. Um, so she gets saved, thrown into a back to tank. He, he gets out of the back to tank. He's like, "Where's Leo?" Because Leia gets caught by Riva. Um, uh, Epic Mike from uh, Geeks and Gamers shows up and chews out Kenobi. I, I don't know. <laughs> Epic Mike and Ice T had a baby. Um, and Ice he, Cube's son. That's who that is. Ice Cube. Sorry. Yeah. It did, was it Ice Cube? No, it wasn't. Because Ice. No, Cube, it's really Ice Cube's son. Was that really? Oh my. God. Yeah, it's actually. Because like I recognize him from uh, Straight Out of Compton. He was awesome in Straight Out of Compton, and he was not awesome in this. So Chris might be right. Um, Ice Cube's son or Epic Mike. Uh, was uh, with a haircut. Um, as like, I lost a wife. I lost a wife. I can't. We can't do this. You got to get out of here. You you know, telling Konobi to get out of here. So uh, um, then, Elyria Sand says, "No, I'll go." After they go through this whole hubble. Why did the Chris? Why? Okay, explain it to me. Why did they go through the hubble blue? Whatever the fuck they were doing until they finally decided to uh, just take those to Elyria Sand and fucking Obi Wan. They were like arguing over nothing. I just thought it was so stupid that every single conflict that comes up is resolved like one minute later. He brings up his reluctance. You know, my wife was a Jedi. I lost my wife. I guess I'll help you. I won't help you. I lost a wife. I will help you. Wait, what? <laughs> like there's just, this is, I mean, the weakest part of the show is 
the writing. I mean, we're not even talking about the effects because look, the effects are fine. They're, they're done by professionals. Um, there's no reason to talk about, but like lapses in logic, like that laser gate, which is the, the dumbest oh my thing. God. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, it just defies logic. Like it just, all of this is just like, it's not well thought through. I, 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 this is why I think like was this show was like each episode was shot in six days, right? It was just like I, shot I agree with that. Like, it, it, we got it, hurt. Yeah. Yeah. It's so it's, I, I think I think that's like it's like forced drama to make something happen. There, I mean, this episode was all fucking yeah. filler, right? It was just complete filler episode. So it wasn't as just dis- no, it was dist- destructive as the last episode. So yeah, Kenobi and Hilaria Sand get to the in- Inquisitorium. I don't know what the fuck it's called. And I don't care. <laughs> the yeah. the ocean in the ocean with all the dumb fucking bad guys in it. And they go to the big pointy building in the ocean with the dumb fucking bad guys. And guess what? All the bad guys are fucking dumb. So they walk around and you see some Jedi's encased in amber, which I, okay, I, I thought it looked fucking cool and dark. Like you got to separate it from the show. Like if they would have, if we lived in a, a good timeline, like this could have been creepy and cool, but instead it was just it, something they did nothing with. And it was supposed to be I, to kill time as Obi-Wan slowly walks down a fucking hallway. And, and you know, when a show is padded, when there's a lot of slowly walking down a fucking hallway, you know, it's kind of like Blade Runner 2049, except TV series. Um, Do you know why that they have shots like that in shows? Like when you would see an episode of the X-Files and you'd see them walk up or like a procedural show, they walk up to it's to it's to make the time because you can always cut it out. It's it you don't need someone to walk from the car up to the porch to knock on the door to have someone answer. Right. You can just have someone answer. So what they do in particular in television is they shoot garbage time to fill so that the show is exactly 48 minutes, right? An yep. hour long show or drama or whatever. But they're doing this in a show where time is irrelevant. You don't need those kinds of shots. Exactly. In a yeah. show where time doesn't matter. It, it doesn't surprise me that this, this particular episode's 38 minutes. It's because nothing happens. It's 38 minutes and it's got a ton of padding. It's it's like, uh, uh, you've watched classic doctor who like classic doctor who has every car driving up a driveway a dude getting out of the car and walking up to the fucking door like every right. fucking episode has something like that and we're fine with it but this you're right this is fucking ridiculous i don't care about corridors i don't care about any of this so kenobi walks down the corridor and alaria san you know they get by all the dumb people it's fucking contrived and stupid so they eventually get away. All right. So they get Leia. By the way, Leia's being interrogated by Riva. Why is she interrogating a 10-year-old? Why doesn't she just call Bail Organa and put a fucking lightsaber to her throat and go tell me everything? Yeah, exactly. Why does she just use her fucking head off? Send she had the, the force yeah. power. Why don't she do that? She she yeah. used the force power earlier in the show. Why didn't she use the force power on the 10-year-old? And then yeah. she could find out she was force sensitive. Oh, but see, then they couldn't do that because she oh. would have found out she's force sensitive. Oh, yeah. oh no. Plot complication. Doesn't matter. The interrogation goes fucking nowhere. And uh so th- they escape with Princess Leia. Inexplicably, these two people, one of the most wanted men in the galaxies, walking around. The, like the central headquarters of en- the the inquisitors, the people looking for Jedi's. He's fucking <laughs> um, he's is there, Jedi. like somewhat <laughs> covered up. It's fucking stupid. Uh, so they get away, and guess what? Saves them. No speeders save them because remember, snow speeders. They were really cool. They were honestly the coolest ship in Star Wars, in my opinion. But oh yeah, dude. A couple of snow speeders. Spe- speeders come yeah. in, and it's the people who said they wouldn't save them before, but now it's it's uh, ice tea. Epic Mike come down. It's and, the Han Solo moment. Yeah. He comes in at the last second and saves him. It's the same. Shit and they get away. For. And then Darth Vader fucking shows up. Finally. You know. And I uh, guess he was on a long trip. And he uh, strangles Reva. And I'm like, oh my God, she's finally going to die. <laughs> but this, what, what's, what's, what should have happened in this show is we could have gotten. because Look, the prequels had a lot of action. A lot of stuff happens in the prequels, right? This would yeah. be an opportunity for us to get to know, get into the heads of the characters, which is something 
the movies don't do particularly well because exactly. they're very surface level, right? So, like, let's right. get into the head of Vader. What does is he happy with what he sacrificed? You know, was did he make the yeah. right? Does he regret his decision? Like, like, there's so much. I'm sitting here. Look, if I'm if I'm in the writers room and we're talking about this. We're going to get into the head of Vader and Kenobi, and that's what the show's going to be about. The show's not about that. It's about mm -hmm. young Leia, who's just, she's a typical freaking eight, nine year old. And then Reva, who's not particularly even filled out. We get a little glimpse of her story at the beginning. She was a former, you know, Jedi in training as a kid and whatever. Now here she is. We're, you know, uh, but, but, you know, even she is just like, just, I, I don't know. I can't, I don't like her character, but, you know, that. No. She's annoying. Yes. You're um, not okay. Okay. The, the Reva, and you said it yourself, dude. And but I'll take it, I'll take the heat for it. Chris is please, a good guy. Please. Give me the heat. Um <laughs> uh, so when Reva is interrogating Leia, you know, the, Chris said, and he's right, he's absolutely right. There was two bad actors in the scene together. But the yep. thing is, the eight-year-old's an eight-year-old. We give her like you get a pass, you're eight. It's a bit right. of a doubt. Yep. Not Reva, not not trained at fucking Juilliard or whatever the fuck she she wasn't trained at Juilliard, but like the equivalent, right? She was trained at some fucking super duper acting school, right? Well, damn, they failed her. Wasted she wasted money. some money. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. But all yeah. Disney saw was black woman. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, maybe, and like, hey, maybe <laughs> look at that. We know you and McGregor can act. I think he's a big fucking phony and always yeah. been a big fucking empty headed phony, but he can act. Okay. Um. So maybe she can too, but like they're, they're given nothing in this. It is really, uh, it feels rushed. Like Chris says, I, mm -hmm. again, completely agree that this that I'm six days to shoot a, an episode might be generous. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, we know they're under the COVID restrictions, which makes everything cost 30% more, which is insane. And by the way, those are, those are there forever. They are not leaving. Did you hear that? That that is some crazy. Oh really? Oh, what? They're is gonna cut that. First of all, yeah. It's they a, said the, the, the Yeah, they said that they they said the protocols are there for good. <laughs> They're it's, done, it's, man. It's gonna just it's gonna destroy the industry and already an industry that has it's bloated. I'm talking about mainstream Hollywood filmmaking, where you have you they're they're creating new positions to grift money off of Hollywood because Hollywood is so susceptible and so you know so wanting to virtue signal. So you've got all these COVID restrictions. When I did my when I even when I did my little award show, right. Last year in 2021, we did it at a drive-in. We had to get a COVID compliance officer and $2 million of hold harmless insurance, which cost Jeez. us a couple grand, right? Cost us a couple grand, but it's a grift. It's just a shakedown. It's for the, yeah. it's the medical industry is coming in and saying like, hey, that's a nice production you got there. Hope nobody gets COVID with lawsuits. So their fear of lawsuits and fear of like one of their main actors getting sick um, it has made them put in all these like insane restrictions. Then you've got, you know, uh, you, you've also got your intimacy coordinator. That's another worthless job. And you've got another, you know, you've got, uh, the, all the, all the diversity, uh, rules right. that are being pushed on films and mainstream Hollywood diversity films. officers. That's why I'm thinking that. So these three things has nothing to do with making a good movie or a good television show. Those three things that are now siphoning off of whatever the slim budget already was. So you've got that happening. You know, that this is a concern. So where is the time to even focus on making a freaking movie? I mean, when you when you read about like the making of like classic movies that today we still love, like the first Raiders of the Lost Ark film, a lot of that stuff was like, uh, you know, Harrison Ford had the flu that day. Had he not had the flu, he wouldn't have shot that guy with the, with the big sword, right? Like, that's why they're like, yeah. I don't want to do it. They had a big fight scene choreographed and Harrison Ford's like, how about if I just shoot him? That's a great idea. Right. And a lot of Raiders of the Lost Ark, frankly, if you read about the making of it or watch little mini docs about it was very run and gun. It was very run and gun creative. And why? Because Spielberg was trusted to do that. You can, when you look at the show, you can tell it's being noted to death. It's by committee. This is the compromise. That's why all the creative decisions are so milquetoast and safe and boring and lame. Uh, put them in a back to tank. They like that. It's a Star Wars thing. It's a Star Wars thing. It's a Star Wars thing. There's nothing new. This, this show creates nothing new, adds nothing to the lore, and worse, 
it destroys the the canon and, and legacy of our, our of the original trilogy, right? Like, okay, so Obi Wan parted ways in Revenge of the Sith to meet again twenty years later, and and have words. This could this could have at least bridged something with that a build up to that fight or like you know show them as both broken men and yeah. and it could have been a much more much more thoughtful way of looking at this and it's just it's being put together by uncreative people and Gary you pointed this out before you know I feel like a lot of the creatives are being cast that are involved right you've brought that up many times I agree with you it's it's you know, they want to they want to look good they want to look good to they give a shit what Twitter thinks and nobody should care what Twitter thinks about anything. I, I hate mm -hmm. that platform. Um, and I'm disappointed that the Elon deal may not be, you know, may not I'm be happening. I'm pretty disappointed oh, too. No. Cause I yeah. thought that would reverberate on to, to other platforms, but you're right. Uh, well, yeah. Especially with the casting thing and uh, on an individual label, what gets lost in our argument? Cause everybody's calling us whatever. I know you guys in the chat don't feel that way is yeah. the human beings who get cast in these parts, some of them go, you know what? I don't appreciate being cast. It was kind of fucked up. I went there. I worked there. They didn't listen to one of my fucking ideas, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, it was just, it was all fucking lip service. And I was essentially a director of photography. I wasn't even a director, right? I wasn't even a writer. I was like a script super. I was like an editor, a script supervisor, you know, a script doctor in some cases. Um, it's fucked up. It is. So, and, and those people need to speak out. They don't need me. They don't need to talk to me. They need to talk to all of you. Okay. That's, but that's why I try to tell them over and over again. It's like hey, hearing it from me is not going to matter because I'm, I'm the bigot. So they need to hear it from you. Uh, and, and hopefully that that's how things change. If not, then things won't change. That's the way it goes. It's, it's very sad. Uh, and then there's some people who willingly participate and know what divides divides people to them. Fuck you, heartfelt, heartfelt. Fuck you, uh, because it, you know the, it's the it's the going after the fans part that is just inc it's inconscionable. You know what what Disney did the marketing that they have done for years. By the way, we have been calling that shit out for fucking years, and now people are actually truly starting to see it because that narrative that played out in real time from from this fucking show was obvious. Was and it turned so many people. It turned so many people. So thank you, Disney. Thank you. Uh, we all called it out early too. Yep. I mean, it was just so in your face about it before the show came out. Like two weeks before the show. Oh, look at this. There's an article about they trained her about the racism in the fandom. Oh, oh, look at that. The show comes out. It's not good. Oh, look at that. Oh, there happens to well, be a, some, some DMs of some randos. You okay, yeah. Me. So surprising. Yep. Uh, Kojiro Miramoto. Kojiro Miramoto. Welcome. Thank you for the 20 Australian dollars. Uh, this is on the Super Chat side. It says, uh, when someone says they like a woke show, I call it the porn defense. You don't like it for the good writing interesting characters or plot you like it because it shows you what you want to see that's very good that's very good only a side and of course you're i'm sure you would agree with me a lot of porn is written better than disney plus we got to admit that okay especially <laughs> the old 70s porn where they really tried to like you know be artistic yeah, there's like know. a storyline in there yeah there's like storylines and shit right the devil and miss jones gripping no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why, uh, by the way, there is a, there is an, uh, uh, an Asian name written in an Asian language, which I don't understand at all, but thank you, uh, for 95 Martian pesos each didn't say anything, but thank you. I appreciate it. I do. So if you're out there, hello, I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm, I don't know my own language. You Can can't you expect want? me to know yours. Uh, <laughs> why was Vader burned anyway the emperor should have just force healed the whole body that's what i was thinking the sod monster <laughs> for 10 british pounds <laughs> what, which is yeah, real money by the way why not uh the emperor can force heal himself from an atom so why not force heal darth vader selfish asshole that's the only thing i can think yeah of. what a jerk what a jerk I, I always thought i always this sounds like a weird thing i always thought it would have been more interesting for revenge of the sith to end with you know, Obi-Wan and, and Anakin in a draw or, you know, Anakin knocked unconscious 
the emperor discovers his body and he out of fear chops off his arms and legs because he's afraid of Anakin's power. But when he awakes, he tells him that, that Obi-Wan did it. So yeah, that's some that's right. fucking dark, Chris. Yeah, I know uh, it's fucking dark, but it'd be like you evil. discover him. Maybe he's burned, but it's just like, you know, the emperor is in fear of, of Anakin's power. So he just sort of slices his arms and legs off. Right. You know, just like, just does it. I know it's dark, but, but also it's like a secret, right? This dark secret that the emperor really like the emperor made him that way. Not Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan couldn't, couldn't do it. Uh, so yeah. I, that's just, you know, the, the way the battle went down in my head when I was a kid forever on Mustafar, which I didn't know was called Mustafar. I, it was lava right. planet at the time exactly. was that, uh, Obi-Wan chopped off his hand or his arm and he fell back into the lava and the lava did the rest of the work on him. That's the way I always thought. I didn't think Obi-Wan was going to be all chopping everything off on him. So. <laughs> yeah, that like how like weird. Fruit ninja. Like, okay, yeah, and then just leaves him there to die. I just think that there was, I mean, I love yeah. that lightsaber duel. It is one of the best lightsaber duels in all of Star good. Wars. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a good lightsaber duel. It's in an interesting place. But leaving right? them there to die, it's like, you're right. It's like, no, finish it. Finish it. It's like, yeah, the, that's yeah. kind of cruel. Yeah. Or at least think you finished it. Like somehow they're separated and he just goes, I got to go into hiding. And like I say, the emperor finds him unconscious. Or he dies or it looks like he dies. It looks, ah, yeah. It looks like he dies. And yeah. then that whole thing of like, the whole thing was, you know, um, Anakin wanted the secret of how do I prevent someone from dying? Well, maybe what happens is that the emperor resurrects him. Right. Obi-Wan yeah, does kill him. Secret. maybe yeah, yeah yeah we're coming up with we're coming up with at least interesting ideas i'm not saying that these are good ideas but at least different and and that's where i think that the kenobi series fails so miserably and i think almost all of the disney content that that we've seen and and, and it, it deserves the term content i will refer to disney content as content because that's what it, it like, is it is content i don't love consume. logan I, right. as much as i used to the, the movie logan i i don't I, I just because I've only seen it once and I don't ever want to see it again. It's really fucking depressing. It was a well made movie. It was interesting to see. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just an optimist. I like the way the days of future past ended. That's the, I like yeah. that ending better than nope, everybody dies. I'm like, yeah, it's too foreign <laughs> yeah. for me for superheroes. So, um, but I understand it. And that was a character study. Sure. There was some action in it, but that's like, if that's the direction you wanted to go with Kenobi. That's the direction you go. Right. Broken man, but slowly becomes more resolute in time on his own through his training through Qui-Gon. Um, and he has to do some pretty dark shit to protect Luke. I think pretty much everybody accepted that. And that might explain the whole Ben thing other than hiding. Right. It was like, no, I'm not really a Jedi anymore because I might have killed somebody who might have been innocent to protect Luke. You know, you make it questionable too. You know, something like that. That would have been much more interesting, like a Western, like Unforgiven. Or, and I, I haven't read the book. I've got it. I'm probably going to listen to it at some point. I got the auto book, uh, the Kenobi book that came out in uh, 2013 that Ryan recommends. Uh, I heard it's pretty damn good. A lot of people recommended it. So, Maybe you should. That's post you, Disney purchase. Is that? It is. It was written Disney before can. it. Yeah, I think it was written before it, because uh, mm. the the purchase was in 2012. So uh, it, it, yeah, right. well, it was 2012. So it was like already in production. Before There's a few of those that were legends the, that were still coming out. When did they cancel so the U? 2014. 2014. Oh, when was that? I'm pretty sure. It, it was, I think. I think so. Yeah. I was doing the show when they canceled the EU. It was like one of my very first podcasts. Uh, you know, my co-host is like, they canceled the EU. I'm like, oh, that's going to piss off Star Wars fans. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> wow. Why would they do that? You know, uh, that was, it was just like, at first, because like this, these were back in the days where I'm like, no, Disney's going to be good. It's going to be good. Going to be good, man. We're going to get some good shit out of this. So naive. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, D pa grunt for ten dollars says sorry i missed the show just walked out of top uh oh wait a minute oh st uh, okay these are old why are why are these yeah, not, I was gonna say, why are these not popping up do, 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 do. oh shit okay never mind hang on i'll go to the other place gonna go to the other place uh x-ray girl will be uh producing these shows starting in july gathering them yeah 
July. Starting in July. That's when we officially start. Like when X Ray Girls here producing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's we'll, we'll have a <laughs> these know, are all just practice. These are practice. Chris is gonna be in the credits. He's gonna be prominent on the thumb, you know, all that good stuff. Uh we are just going uh fly by the seat of our pants. And that might not change all the time, but we'll see. You know, Chris has got limited time. I've got limited time, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about Miss Marvel next. I'm just gonna read this super chat right here. 100 Swedish krona from Magnus Magnuson. Uh, did you, thank you very much. Do uh, did not really believe these Hollywood apologists actually were real people until a flame war erupted after my captain of the high seas decided to let the mods ban what is a woman and 2000 mule torrents. Really, what one. Yeah, a, pi a pirate so, site. So yeah, even uh, on the high seas, you cannot get two thousand mules. And what is a woman? Well, I'm sure that I mean the guys who made the movie probably prefer that because they'd like rather have you pay for it. To be honest, hey, you're helping them out. But um, I I I think if I was speaking for both of them, I think they would say, "Hey, you know what? We understand that not everybody can afford our film, and we want you to see it." Uh, that's that that has always been my view on piracy i think the people generally who are going to pay for it will pay for it the people who weren't going to pay for it were never going to pay for it. but if they see your thing and they become a big fan of it then they might come and pay for it and then the people who saw your thing and aren't a fan for it weren't going to pay for your shit anyway so there you go it's it's listen it's part of life it ain't going anywhere uh piracy is part of life uh you should not do it. It's a terrible thing. But I think it can be uh, used. Uh, Game of Thrones used it brilliantly as marketing. We're the most yeah, pirated that's... show in the world. They loved it. Are you kidding it, me? And yeah. it was one of the biggest shows of all time until and it you know, the, shit yeah. the bed. Well, the well actually, John, piracy happens in places you can't see it anyway. So, sorry, Chris, go on. No, no, like a real quick story. Um, my friend, John Schnepp. Shout out to John Schnepp. All the sweaties out there yeah. miss my friend um passed away in 2018 he uh so he did this documentary called the death of superman lives what happened and just before he released it on digital great job um, by the way. Worked on this movie. it's great it, he worked on it for years he did like two crowdfundings and yeah. made the film and he finished the movie and then recut it um you know when he got a key interview but what he did was when he was about to release it on digital he created a file that was like a two hour long file, right? He put the first 10 minutes of his movie in there and then it just goes to like fuzz and it starts to fade out and yeah. it goes to like garbage. And he put it up on all the pirate sites. So he actually did a pirated version of his own movie, but it only showed you the first 10 minutes of the movie and then went away and then was like, here's how to buy the movie. And he did that to promote, and he put it up on every pirate site. He did like 20 different versions and he basically, people got frustrated and it he thinks it helped the sales of his movie so i think for for like mainstream stuff i don't care but when it comes to like indie stuff like i think it's important to support independent creators like like john and i remember him sitting by his phone he couldn't believe it like when pe so many people were buying the movie all at once but he credits that pirate his piracy sort of strategy was to trick them into getting a glimpse of the movie and then hopefully buying it so there you go there you go there's ways around it you know uh, Snap's it, a legend. Yeah, he is. Yeah. That's that's yeah. a smart move. I, I and th again, that's a way. Or you give the first fucking episode for free of a TV series, and they do that once yeah. in a while, you know. And that's yeah. that's smart. If you believe in your work, go okay. Here's the first one free, kid. And uh, it, you know, it doesn't work all the time. Star Trek Discovery tried that with season two and uh, got downvoted so badly they had to remove it. So that's the way it comes. Isn't that the Strange New Worlds, the first episode. I don't I don't know what the you know if it got ratioed or what the what the uh, deal was on that new one. worlds have you watched it you've watched it i watched right? the first two episodes i i, I you know it, it, it's like i just wish it wasn't the enterprise i just the, just do a different ship a different timeline you know it was fine the writing of that show is what's embarrassing this is like this is a consistent theme in a lot of the things we talk about you know it's just like the writing is weak it sounds like a someone in their 20s who has no life experience writing it Yep. You know, there's no, and, and they're, they're 
you know, their influences are the thing that they're, you know, the, their influences. Yeah. I've watched star Trek. It's like, that's not, no, you, mm -hmm. how about classic literature? How about the, the source material? Where did, and not only the source material, the original series, but like, what was that influenced by, you know, like what was right. happening at the time, right. you know, like, and, and and there's just no context. That's why these shows are so weak. That's why Kenobi. That's why they're filled with pop culture references and references to references. Because these, you're right. Because it's all these kids know. They don't know like historical references. You know, one of the right. things I love about Song of Ice and Fire is like weaving in the War of the Roses and shit and and yeah. some of the Roman history. I think that's fucking awesome. I love that. And uh, in or or mythology, uh, you know, which I'm still learning. Right. You know, I only got into like mythology about 10 years ago and I'm like going nuts for it now. You know, uh, I only got into HP Lovecraft like 10 years ago. I fucking love that dude. Now I don't care if he's, I, I really don't give a fuck. Dude, his, his stories are so good. He, all of the short stories and stuff, just the, the cave alone where he just goes into the cave. That's, that's great. Not even talking about the Cthulhu mythos. Like, man, this thing is awesome just got this in the fucking but i mean we talk about this before it's the writers now they don't have life experience like nope. the creators that we that we well, love uh they just don't a long time ago i was watching razor fist videos so i really got into the pulp writing the style is so much better it's so fucking much better than today uh and we've regressed we've regressed like artistically yeah. in culture it's it's bad okay um before we get to the wrap up super chats let's talk briefly about miss marvel since it's in the title <laughs> and since we watched it Ugh. uh you go first chris <laughs> uh well it's forget i watched it a couple weeks ago i thought it was uh completely forgettable i think it's like it's it's a disney channel show about a teen girl who's a fan girl of you know captain marvel who has a a, a wacky family they're not wacky they're muslim and mm -hmm. and that actually the family dynamic of the show is the part that actually works the best because I feel like that's what Disney Channel does. The superhero part of the show is embarrassing and stupid, and it's I think it's just a show for children. It's not a show for mm -hmm. me, you know. It's just it's a show uh, for kids, and and I I don't know what to say. I don't know the changing of the powers. I think is a is is bad it's not going to line up with the comics if they ever cared about that but um i don't know how they were going to work her into a movie um mm. but Ooh. yeah i did not i uh, i don't really care i saw the first two episodes and i'm kind of checked out uh did they put up the first episode or first two what did you see they gary the first uh they put up the first episode uh, at the same time mm -hmm. as they put up kenobi <laughs> like it <laughs> very it was like same time and i'm like and then I started, I continued watching Skidwalker Ranch. <laughs> I'm like, I'll watch it. <laughs> um, so, so I watched it this morning. And uh, so I only have one episode. And um, okay, I don't like Kamala Khan. I don't like the character. Uh, I tried reading it briefly when it came out with Marvel Now. And I'm like, this is not for me. This is a comic book for 14 year old girls. I'm not a 14 year old girl, whatever. Um, not knowing like what that was a precursor to, I just thought it was like, you know, I was in the comic shop. I run across woke ass fucking comics that I didn't like, but there was always plenty of shit that I liked that I can just go, fuck, whatever. You know, there's, I, I called it the PBS section of, uh, my, my store. And I literally made it a section, which I, I was never a big fan of indie books, like underground books, like blankets, you know? You know, me and my girlfriend, like with this like, really bad cart Cal Arts fucking draw. I never yeah. liked that shit. Okay. I've just never liked it, never will. When it comes to comic books, like my men in tights, my women in tights, or my really dark, violent fucking fantasy with like Conan. Um, so yeah, I'm not a pixie and fairy dust guy, not the biggest fan of Sandman. I uh, love the art. I thought the art in the Sandman books was great. I thought Neil Gaiman has always been one of the most overrated comic book writers ever. And I mean, ever. Um, I like uh, Books of Magic. Thought that was pretty good. And that's about it. And the Death miniseries. 
that's it. That's the only point, the ones I like by everything else. I kind of think is boring shit, but I almost um, want to say him as a writer. <laughs> I know that's kind of crazy. Cause he's like one of the most revered writers, but I don't know how it's kind of okay. Like just, stuff is okay. Coraline was an he interesting lot, kid's he, book. He brought a lot of girls into the comic book industry. Yeah. Yeah. It's very kind a of a girl centric um, girl, goth girls. And it's like, okay, that's good. I mean, like you get credit for that. You do. I liked his Norse book, his Norse mythology book, but that was just, reciting norse mythology reciting norse mythology i know i've got it too um you know american gods was okay i read it and then, you know like i didn't like i read sandman you know there's characters i love in it it's not blowing anybody's socks off but it's not blowing anybody's socks off i digress yeah. we're trying not to talk about miss marvel miss marvel was never any of that miss marvel was was character was um sana amanat self-insert fan fiction that's what it is uh, Sana Amanat is a political activist who worked for a previous company that um, that went to shit immediately, Virgin Comics. She worked there uh, and drove it into the ground. Um, her family was politically connected somehow to the Obamas, and somehow she got a, a editorial job at Marvel and then shot through the ranks like she was fucking Stanley. And she and heather antos both created characters that were self inserts uh, spider gwen is the single dumbest thing marvel's yeah. ever created ever i mean ever uh very close second is miss marvel kamala khan uh <laughs> it could have been something but it wasn't it was a don't, self don't forget about america chavez became identity politics america chavez number one is the worst comic i've ever read um by the way, we did a dramatic reading on Flash's uh, Flash cast about a year and a half ago. Yeah, it Go was glorious. Find it. It was glorious. It was fun. Um, so yeah, it's it's a nothing character that they've com that they felt so strongly about. By the way, you're hearing, you know, I've done a couple of videos, done a couple of videos on the subject, and you heard over and over again this really popular character, Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel. She's just sold so many comics, and oh, oh, she didn't sell any comics. Oh, she sold a lot of. Uh, 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 graphic novels to Scholastic and digital comics with numbers we can't really prove. Mm. She doesn't sell a lot of comics. Her comics have been canceled multiple times. She was the star in a big flop video game that I think Eric July is the only guy who played it was uh, uh the Avengers game where she was the bait star. and switch. Uh, and yes, uh, they killed Captain America and basically replaced him with Kamala Khan and it lost sixty million dollars. Don't know how that happened. Hmm. Well, probably because they have like an ugly black widow in it too. Like, what the Dude, fuck? all of the designs are really bad. Oh, but they they, bad. they promoted that game as an Avengers game. You're gonna be playing the Avengers. And really it's just Kamala Khan that nobody gives gives a shit about if they even know who she is. So when when companies have to resort to that, that they're they're lying to you. So now now put up or shut up time. Here is Kamala Khan in her own show, not connected to anything else. And of course, we're, it's got an 86% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, 97% critic score, but I know something all of those critics don't. And I can't wait to tell you. I can't wait to tell you. But I saw the first episode and it sucked. They, you know, like stylistically, they're trying to make it a kid show uh, as far as like all the graffiti moving on the walls and the art moving. That's fine. I like that's trying to make a comic book. But it like this show is not for me. I am not a 14-year-old girl, nor do I want to be, nor do I care about Jersey City, nor do I care about any of this. But it's on them to make me care. And uh, they did not make me care. I was bored to fucking tears. The family is generic sitcom deep, like like Chris said, uh, family, not you know, and uh, Kamala Khan is is we're supposed to believe that she's this picked on girl who's hyperly confident, self-absorbed. So she's both bullied and super confident. And I go, what? Uh huh. So that, that, that's that for, and that's it. No hero's journey. She gets her powers. Chris, tell us how she gets her powers. She puts on a bracelet that comes in the mail from her grandma. Yep. Mm. If I remember correctly, it's literally mm -hmm. a box. What's this yes. bracelet? And she puts the bracelet on. What a weak, what are the lamest, like, how, how do you write that and think you're good at your job? I mean, it's just like, 
I mean, it's like literally it came in the mail, not an interesting way to acquire it. It wasn't like, I mean, look, if that's fine, the power comes to the bracelet. Great. How about a different way for her to acquire it? That maybe there was some effort involved or it was uh, something in exchange and she sort of takes the bracelet maybe because, you know, doing a favor for somebody else, some trade. It's like, oh, I'll take this bracelet. I'm trading you a PS5 for this bracelet or whatever it is. For <laughs> she's cleaning yeah. out the attic of her grandmother's house or something. And she's like, what's this opens up a box. Oh, some magical bracelet. That's more interesting than getting That's it in the that. fucking mail. It's in the mail in a box. It's so <laughs> it's, look, I, I, do you think Gary, do you have any predictions on, I, I watched the first two episodes. I'm out. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to watch anymore. Do you have any predictions about like what they're going to try to do to save it? I mean, are they going to have like, a bunch of cameos at the end is brie larson gonna show up uh i wouldn't be surprised they really try to deify Ke captain marvel in oh this and you just laugh right you know right she saved the avengers and then like kamala mm -hmm. khan's at this uh this avengers con which looks like a crafts high school show cosplay yes. thing which is fine, but it doesn't look like any fucking con we've ever been to like ever. So I'm like, how could you not make a con look like a fucking con? Like, seriously, how did you like, how did you go cheap on a con? Like what? So um, it's in a warehouse in South Jersey, which I'm sure nobody got mugged or raped anywhere in Jersey city. Yeah. This is like the nicest, most eclectic uh, fucking hipster part of Jersey city. Maybe it exists. I don't know. Doesn't sound like it. It's a gender fight area. Uh, and like she deifies Captain Marvel. Like Captain Marvel's like this like iconic character. And it's like the bad Captain Marvel costume, right? Chris Gore. Like Miss Marvel had a decent costume. No problem. Like the real one, Carol Danvers. But this costume with the fucking mohawk and shit, it looks like fucking garbage. And she's like, yeah. like she's looking at Superman, and you're like, come on, guys, give us a break. All right. No. Never deify She Hulk or the Invisible Girl. We'll 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 go with you on that one. We will, but uh, not this. Storm, Storm, Jean Grey, yes, Rogue. Okay, not fucking Captain Marvel. Uh, I think um, after she got her powers, right, she used her powers to win a cosplay contest. A cosplay yeah. contest. Pretty right. embarrassing. That con, it looks like the con. The, it's like someone who's never been to a con convention. Yeah. Right. It just it was kind of embarrassing, like you said. A they read like high school. The, crap. They read the description of a con, and we're like, okay. Right. So I guess yeah. we'll do that. Again, yeah, all these things. Yeah. It's not right. paper mache cutouts. <laughs> yeah. Saying. Exactly. Or like a giant. I don't know. Ant Man thing. It was just. It was just like. No, this is not. This is like no con I've ever been to. You know, I don't know what they were trying to do. No, so it was mostly boring. Uh, the mom doesn't want her to do anything. She wants her to stay in the here and now and not in, 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 not have her head in the clouds. And she just wants to be a superhero. And then she's going to eventually become a superhero and then fight some bad guys and be a superhero. Sounds like a really exciting story, doesn't it? But I feel yeah. seen as a. Uh, Pakistani girl from Jersey City who just so happens to be Sana Amanat, who we haven't heard from in a while. Wonder why. Wonder why. She got a little trouble. Um, yeah. It's uh it's MCU. It's just beginning. They need uh, 200. Uh they need a hundred. Is it million yes 100 million subscribers in a year and a half not gonna happen not gonna if, happen. if anything they're gonna be losing subscribers right i mean like if you've had D disney plus for any length of time you've kind of seen what you want to see that's on there everything original that's coming out is weak i'm not put put aside the marvel star wars stuff have you like looked at what else is on that platform or when you had it gary i don't know if you unsubbed i i'm stuck with a three-year subscription that runs out i think in october november anyways <clears throat> there's not much else on the platform in fact a, a lot of the new stuff is just garbage you would see on disney channel i'm like I've got a password it's a disney channel card 
I have a password share with a lot of shit. Like with oh, Hulu, Disney Plus, uh, I have HBO Max and Amazon Prime. I have accounts to those. Uh, Netflix, yeah. Netflix, Hulu, Disney Plus, and I think another one. I have uh, I share passwords. The um, only thing that Disney Plus would be useful for, if you cared about getting Disney Plus, which I do not, I do the same thing. Password share. Uh, oops. Hmm. Is if you have kids, they'll watch the the cartoons. And like you just said, it's Disney oh, okay. Disney Channel garbage that's not worth watching if you're above the age of three. <laughs> you know, it's it's all bad content. And then the stuff that they're putting out that's for adults, quote unquote, is also not good. It's all bad content. So there's really no yeah. reason to kind of keep it around. So, yeah, I think you're totally right. The. Disney Plus is going to lose subscribers, if anything. I mean, we're seeing Netflix lose subscribers. Disney Plus is definitely going to lose subscribers. Well, that's going to be the economy and people looking at $10, at least in California, you know, already seeing $8 mm -hmm. for gas. They're adding, yeah. you know, another uh, digit there to, to go up to 10 well, this, yeah, you're this, well, it's 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 all relative. Sorry, Chris, I'll, I'll get right back to you. But yeah, here in Texas, yeah, yeah. you know, where it was like two when I first visited here, it was two dollars and fifty cents. By the way, I was like almost moved to tears when that happened. And that for me was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, gas so prices are ridiculous. But um and Gary's like, Oh my goodness. Yeah, but now it's like where the gas was when I left California yeah. here in We're Texas. Like five bucks. Like, no, it's all bucks? relative. Like yeah, uh, it's up four to to five dollars. It's costing hundred dollars to fill up your tank, hundred twenty five yep. dollars to fill up your tank. As a California, I'm totally fucking used to this, but you guys are not, and I didn't want to bring it here. Believe me, because I like saving money here. Go on, Chris. Yeah, sorry. No, but like, look, the first thing people cut is entertainment. You're gonna see people looking at, and also not to mention even the grocery store where shrinkflation is real, where you see like yep. portions of things being shrunk. I went to buy yep. hot dogs the other day. It's like you get them in a six pack now for like three bucks. I used to buy eight yep. for a buck fifty. Yep. What the hell is is, is yep. going on? Like, like so they just sort of change the packaging, which is frustrating. So the economy is, and it's we're just getting started. I mean, I'm I'm seeing articles that are saying that Biden could end up being a worse president than Jimmy Carter. No he surprise. Already is. Already I, is. I, I, he already, he already is. is. But that's like them saying, being nice. Yeah. Like, you know, in the end, this is this is how this period will be looked upon. Um, we're we're in the middle of it. Entertainment, people are gonna be cutting out. You know, and oh yeah, a you know, comic who's be in a comic shop right now. You'd be shitting your exactly. pants. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, people are just the first thing they're gonna cut is entertainment. These shows are gonna go. I, I don't I don't know what's gonna happen. I just think that like you're gonna start to see. I mean, Netflix is losing. And I, I think Disney's next. I mean, it's because once you've had the platform for any length of time, you kind of see like the originals are not worth keeping the platform for. They're just not. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. So and all the old stuff you've seen. Yeah. I mean, like you've seen Star Wars a hundred times. Yeah. You just have. You know. You've probably got three different versions of it sitting on a shelf. When when right. when when Netflix is making a big deal about getting the Amazing Spider Man with Andrew Garfield and it's in the oh. top ten, my, my <laughs> son, I was on I was on Netflix watching Stranger Things and he's like, the Amazing Spider Man's in the top ten. I'm like, yeah, I mean, like oh, I like okay. Spider Man more yeah. too, but it didn't make the movie good. Like it's not good. It's shitty. You know, we like Andrew Garfield, but like, but they made a big deal out of it. I'm like, oh shit, it is bad. It is bad. Well, Gary, we need to one day talk about RRR. It's on Netflix. No excuse. I know uh, I, Nina. Is I'll it? Watch it. I'll watch oh, it. Oh, man, I'm watching watch it today. Man. I'll watch it today. It's, I'm seeing it again tonight for a fourth time in the theater. Oh, it, because... better be, it better be the greatest thing I've ever seen. The way you've got this <laughs> I don't know if I can tell you that, but I'll say the experience of seeing it like with a lot of people, it's like, Again, I haven't seen a movie like that since Endgame in terms of the audience reaction, where it's just like people are going nuts. They're like a like applause, like where you're just like, this is kind of crazy. It's it's definitely a crowd pleaser. It's weird. I know you brought it up. Someone even messaged me because I was damn, I was I, I I usually I watch like FNT like on Fridays. I was actually out with my girlfriend at happy hour and someone was texting me going, You gotta hop on, you gotta hop on. They're talking about you and RRR. 
I didn't want to bug it. Also, great show. I ended up watching the replay. Thanks. What a great episode last week. 200. Ep- dude, congratulations. That's insane. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it was congrats. Nice. And also, like, and it was also like the fact that you've done it like on holidays, you know, too. Like, I've watched those episodes. It's it's great. Alex Jones was just on fire. It was like, um, anyways, so congrats on that. Uh, but Thanks. yeah, no, that I'm movie is just like, this is why I have to like, I have to like have something else, like something positive, you know, that film also, which we have to talk about that movie, Gary, for a specific reason. So I'm, so I'm seeing the movie with a bunch of Hollywood hipsters, you know, Uh mostly just by the physical looks, uh, liberal types. And I'm going like, you know, this movie is very, very pro 2A. It's very pro 2A. The whole, the whole thread through it is that, you know, the Indians would not have been a colony of Britain had they just had some guns. That's it. And that's yeah. the, the movie discusses it very explicitly. Like that is a thread through the movie about what the value of a bullet is. What, what is the yeah. value of this bullet? And and is it is it worth a human life? And it's it's such a great lecture on that. So on the one level, it deals with, you know, the a, a British colony. Right. But this is a British colony in revolt. And it's great because all the bad guys, they all have British accents and they're all white. I love it. It's like it's like a it's like a classic Star Wars movie. So um, and I'm <laughs> I'm cool with it. I love it. But it's 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 it, you we need. To, I'd love to discuss this movie with you. And that's why I'm glad like more people are just seeing it, because we have to go outside of Hollywood to look for worthwhile things. Unfortunately, we're at that point. Hollywood couldn't even make a movie like this. No. And if you look, if they tried to remake it, they would they would they couldn't do it. The themes that are in this movie, the cast the way that it's cast, like you couldn't make this film and it's disappointing to see like, okay, I guess other movies outside of, or or other film industries outside the U S are actually taking the blockbuster Hollywood formula and doing it better and kicking our ass. And it sucks. But you know, Top Gun is like a shining light, right? Like that to me, like, you know, it was made before, you know, before the, the, all that nonsense of the last couple of years. And, uh, and I'm glad it was kind of made in a bubble, you know, there's nothing woke in that thing. And it just, it's just such a great, I saw that three times in the theater too. So yeah, um, it's, it's both rad and bad Top Gun Maverick. Yeah. It's rad because it's a rad movie and it's bad that a 36 year old fucking sequel is the best thing fucking Hollywood's come out with, uh, you know, aside from poor Northman, which is a fucking great movie yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, Northman's great. And then, and then, uh, you know, this RRR thing is, is kind of a, phenomenon people are still fig- finding out but the fact that it's still in theaters and on netflix is weird they're doing like special screenings so and i saw the screening i'm going to there might be 10 seats left which is oh that's awesome group. that's great to yeah. hear i wonder if it's playing near me i mean i've got a awesome home theater so i'm good but um yeah but also crank it that's a movie you have to play loud and it's also uh well Not i don't a need problem. to warn you i don't need to warn you but it's incredibly violent and there's literally a scene in the movie where a character refuses to kneel, refuses to kneel. It's it's there's a lot more of that this movie that I believe the reason it's resonating is there are things in the culture now. And I feel like this this movie is able to say it because it's not an American movie. Right. And yeah. the, the fact that they're courting this guy to do a Marvel film and he's like, yeah, I don't want to make a Marvel movie. Not doing it. So. Oh, and that's good. And I don't think RRR is playing. I think it's probably playing in Austin, but you know, of course, not not yeah. around my parts, which is fine. Firestarter still. I can't believe they remade that movie. The first one's oh, awesome. George bad. C. Scott and David Keith saw that in theaters. Loved it. Uh, all right, so we're gonna give uh, Chris an out here because uh, I know your time is limited, sir. And I'm gonna read some suits before I go. Well, I appreciate that, Garrett. I just want to say thank you to you and Garrett uh, for having me on. It's always fun on the Nooner. Hello. Uh, I want to say also hail to the chat and thank you for uh, tolerating my rants. I I get I get worked up. I get worked up. I get a little. We love it. You know, I get worked up on these things, and um, I am I am actually because because I'm actually seeing RRR tonight. I'm actually doing a live stream on the Film Threat channel. So after you're done watching Gary read these these uh, super chats, if you would like. Uh, come to my channel. Alan Ng and I are going to be talking about, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff, but I uh, will be al- also talking about Kenobi. And um, there, I think I mentioned it briefly in the private chat. If you want to share that some fans sent me a thing where he made a 
fan cut of the first three episodes and kind of i don't, I think it's like polishing a turd to me like <laughs> oh, we'll be one? yeah i heard about that yeah so there's a fan cut if you want to gary you've got the link to it and uh we'll be talking about that as well but uh awesome. thank you for having me on. and uh subscribe to my channel film threat and uh, gary i just appreciate being included i feel very inclusive <laughs> being You're uh you could see yourself yeah. in the nooner now. I see myself in the nooner. You exactly. Seen. You feel, I feel seen. seen. <laughs> oh my God. What a, what a, I don't know. That's a whole other conversation. Oh. Anyways, thanks. Thanks again. I will see you next week and uh, next week. have fun. Wait, wait, you'll be in Dallas, right? Are you going to that? Where are you going to be? I'll, be? I'll be in Dallas, but um, like uh, showtime will be normal. Uh, I'll be home. Okay. No, I'm, I'm going okay, go, I'm, I'm go to Dallas at, either after the show or early Thursday morning. I, don't, I haven't decided yet. Sounds good. Uh, thanks again, everybody. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day. See you, man. Peace, brother. Take care, Later. man. Thanks again. Bye. Bye. Can't wait to get out to San Diego and see that guy, too, and see that. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited for that. We're going we're gonna to have fun. The, the Nerd Rotic Tour. The tour. Going to Shit, Dallas. Get a banner. Get some T-shirts made. Put our oh, tour should. dates on the back. We should. That's kind of a good idea. Like a band. Yeah, dude, that's a good idea. I could, I could show how diverse the staff is. Yeah, we, we call it nerdrotic diversity and inclusion. <laughs> and inclusion. And inclusion. Inclusion. Uh, you got to up talk. Uh, we got Raphael one one seven for one hundred dollars. Hail, hail, all the way. Hey guys. I told you this. I told I told this to Jeremy and Ryan. I would like to get an opinion of my comic I am making. Can't wait to show you all. Fan Expo Dallas next week. Show me. Yes, uh, dude. Be happy yes. to give you an opinion. I, I'm tough but fair. I'm tough. No, no, I'm not gonna hurt your feelings. Oh not into uh, that kind of shit. I know uh, we're trying to wrap up, but let me I'm gonna show you this, man. Yeah. Yeah, this just came across my little came across my the water. desk here. Do, 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 do. Ezra Miller has been accused of supplying a minor with alcohol, marijuana, and LSD. Bye bye. Oh, well, no, I think he's got to kill somebody. I'm going to take that back. I think at he that point, literally has to kill somebody. But it's a minor. It's a minor. This, this is disgusting film. Ain't looking but he good. does have a source, TMZ, which is also kind of you know. Go TMZ to TMZ. Is. I'm blocked by disgusting film. They also block Eric July because they're racist. <laughs> Oh my goodness, look at that picture. Okay, let me Lock share that screen. Black voices like Eric July. How dare they? Dusting. Just look at that uh, star. What a star. Oh, here we go. Let's scroll. Okay, let's read this fucker. All right. Parents say actor taken control of their daughter. Ask court to pro for protective or order. Oh, that's... Ooh. Oh, I'm surprised that daughter... Grum Dude, he's straight. <laughs> He's fucking straight. The only reason he's taking the pipe is to get where he needs to get. And it's jobs. That's that's my opinion that he's he's done whatever it takes to make it in Hollywood. And it's fucked him up, uh, which is honestly a sad story until he goes and grooms other young ladies. By the way, that's grooming. This is grooming. Yep. That's grooming textbook grooming. That's fucking grooming. So, yeah, um, if this is true, if I were her dad. I wouldn't wait for a protective order. I would be the protective order. Mm -hmm. It's fucking Ezra Miller. Uh, so what does it say? What's I can't read it. Let me me zoom it in. Out. Here, I gotta make the screen bigger. There we go. Uh, Ezra Miller is not only a bad influence. They're there. There. Oh my God. He's a danger to the well-being of an 18-year-old woman. How do you know it's a woman? By Mm -hmm. it. It. you a biologist i don't biologist. think so at least according to her parents oh boy I'm getting all kinds of trouble with pronouns here uh who are asking a court to step in and keep the actor away from her according to legal docs obtained by teams by the way if she's a minor you can go just yeah. go get her you can go get her you 18 can though her. well that's not a Is minor it that's, That's not a minor, a, unless they're talking about incidents before she turned eighteen. This got before be. she turned eighteen. Uh, Dakota Iron Eyes, what? Dakota Iron Eyes met with the twenty-three-year-old Miller in two thousand sixteen when she was twelve. Twelve. And the actor was visiting the Standing Rock Reservation in North Dakota. From there, 
Dakota's parents say she and Ezra developed a friendship they believe puts Dakota at risk. It's 2016. Uh, Dakota's parents say Miller flew her to London in 2007 to visit the studio where Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them was being filmed, and she was a big fan, and Miller was a star of the movie. At the time of the trip, they say Dakota was 14 and Ezra was 25. Yo, no, that's weird. That's p- p- Come on. Parents, you guys are to blame for this. She was 14. You took her there. Ain't no fucking movie star getting near my 16-year-old kid. No ever. way. And yeah, unless I'm there. Scroll up a little bit. Nope, oh, scroll down. Sorry. Oh, down, down, down. Sorry, my bad. Uh, as the friendship continued, Dakota's parents claim Ezra supplied their underage daughter with alcohol, marijuana, and LSD. Do you have proof of this? Because if you do, you can end them. Yeah. Uh, not only that, they cl- this is a long time to wait, though. This is the problem I'm having. Yeah, why did you wait this long to, yeah, to report these a issues? Long fucking time ago. She's eighteen uh, now. Known as the fly, unless like the studio was pressuring, I'm not really sure. Uh, best known as Flash, a DC super. I don't care. Dakota's uh, shooting a private. Inst- uh, okay, so the Flash in the DC superhero films disrupted Dakota's shooting a private institute. Schooling, schooling. Sorry, schooling at a private institute in Massachusetts. Massachusetts so much she dropped out in 2021. Ooh. Uh there's photographs together. Uh the parent the parents say they flew Miller. They flew to the parents say they flew to Miller's for Vermont home in January to get their daughter and discovered she didn't have her driver's license, car keys, bank card, and other items that she needed to navigate life independently. They say that she was found. They also found bruises on Dakota's body, which they allege Ezra abu- abused her. Is, is it caused? Caused. Shortly after she got home, Dakota's parents say she fled to New York City to reunite with Ezra. And from there, the pair's been traveling together to Vermont, Hawaii, and Los Angeles. The two were spotted at a club in Hawaii in a video obtained by TMZ. As we reported, Miller got arrested several times during the stay there, including an incident where he allegedly attacked bar patrons. So this is during all the those incidents. He groomed this little girl, and she's like into him now, right? You know, so uh, it sounds very Roman Polanski, nineteen seventies. Does in the docs, Tolkien's parents state Ezra uh, uses violence, intimidation, and threats of violence, fear paranoia, delusions, and drugs to hold sway over a young adolescent Dakota. Uh, Claim Ezra also told Dakota to solely go by Gibson, a nickname she formerly used with the family and friends. Just Uh, just... Then there's this. They say Ezra decided Dakota is non-binary transgender. Wow. He had previously declared herself non-binary queer gay. Okay, I'm, I'm... <laughs> they're both stupid. Okay, <laughs> they're both dumb. Uh, I am an adult and I deserve to feel authority over my own body. I am tired of wondering whether or not cops will show up uh, to section me on a daily basis. I have decided upon a therapist and I am excited to now engage in conversation with a mental health professional about my anxiety and probability of depression. This is no one's business, my choices are my own. Um, as an adult, they are now, but um. We're talking about Ezra. Uh, it seems Dakota is aware of her parents' concerns. She recently took to social media to say she's mentally stable. And her comrade, Ezra, Tommy has speak. been helping her life. She also says she's recently gotten a therapist. Yeah, he's been totally healthy, but I've gotten a therapist too. Uh, whatever. Uh, he's a freak. This shit goes down in Hollywood all the time. All the time. Um, but usually through subtlety of the actor and the protection of the studios, you never hear about it. But Ezra is such a fucking loose cannon because he's such a whack job that, uh, yeah, I mean, WB is going to have to drop this. He's poison now. He is absolute poison now. WB is so screwed. 
they're playing the game so because they can't reshoot their blockbuster movie. And quite frankly, if it makes a ton of money, he'll be safe. If it flops, he's done. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any other studio will take a chance on him. But, uh, it's, yeah, it's disgusting. Wow. It's been a very rapid <laughs> decline in this guy's career. Ask yourself this with the Me Too Times Up era. Why did it stop with kids? Isn't that weird? Yep. It's almost like there's no kids abused in Hollywood. Look at how many fucked up kids. Look at Ezra Miller. Look at how many fucked up kids are in Hollywood. Why did it stop there? Well, the women stopped it. The women of the movement stopped it because they didn't want the focus off them. And the men stopped it because they didn't want the focus on them and the women who are abusing kids too. Yeah, the, the industry really deserves to die yeah it does I, I like art and everything i do i enjoy it and i know there's a lot of good people there uh but not enough good people are speaking up you're all too afraid or you don't like the critics or you see it as some right wing movement you know protecting kids yeah if that's a right wing movement and fucking yeah okay i'm part of it yeah yeah it needs to be destroyed and dismantled in the form it is right now it needs to be taken away from Hollywood because it's just too dark. There's so much disgusting depravity going on in Hollywood. It's just, it needs to be taken apart. Yep. And parents, you let your fucking 14, 12 year old girls take off with movie stars to movies without yep. being surprised. You're fucking idiots. This on you. It's on you. Oh my God. Star fuckers. Thirsty mm -hmm. star fuckers sacrificing your kids. And now what? Seven years later. I mean, shit, exp you know, expose the dude. I don't care, but. Uh, take some responsibility for yourself, too. Yeah. Everett Merrill for $20 says Reva did use to read uh, use. She used the read mind ability, but Leia resisted. All of the lore is ruined. Yeah, the 10 year old uh, resisted a little bit. A and that's when it was fucking ruined. Um, the minute that kid was force sensitive, she's an inquisitor. She knows what to do, you know? So, kind that, of their job. But D Darth Vader comes, and that's when she's able to escape. Um, this thing is, it's. I don't want to, I don't want to do a full review. I'm <laughs> I just want to stop watching it. Cause it's just, it doesn't, you know, when I, when I watch a Marvel thing, it's different, right? Um, I find it just feels close to home, you know, it's just like, I, it I don't like to, I don't like to see something I love as much as I love star Wars continually be raped and murdered over and over and over i just don't enjoy that I mean, the fact of the, i mean the absolute fact of the matter is the great star wars is the original trilogy that's the great yep. star wars everything else everything else has gone from it can range from pretty good to really fucking bad for a long time yeah long time and just with disney star wars 10 years it ain't getting any better. They might be able to squeeze out something entertaining in the next five years, but Luke is Luke is dead as a character within Disney Star Wars. I, I don't know how anybody could give a fuck anymore. Uh, ben magically can use the Force and his lightsaber again. Yes, Scott McKenzie. That's what's going to happen. Is Ben's going to like be able to like take on Darth Vader much better next time? It's going to be dumb. Thank you for the four ninety nine. Um, Becca Robertson for 449. Gary, I am binge watching the Orville and it is awesome. Please, can I yeah. have the clown horn from Leicester in UK? Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. There you go. Becca Robertson from Leicester in the UK. Leicester Square. I've been there. I saw Attack of the Clones there. Did. That's where I saw Attack of the Clones. 
Uh, and there is, did you know that there is a, uh, a, a webcam and there was back in 2003 because I waved to my friend. So there's a webcam in Leicester square that you can watch at any time. And if you well, set up time open. right, you can wave to a friend in San Diego. That's what we did. Uh, a live cam. Back, that's what they called them back in the old days. Uh, if you love Lovecraft, check out the movie Empty Man. It was horrible, mis horribly mismarketed. I will check it out, Silverlock. Thank you for the nine ninety nine. I like um, John Carpenter's Lovecraftian series that he did. Uh, yeah, in the mouth of bad. This is awesome. Uh, there is a new documentary coming out about the uh, Kamala Harris becoming vice president. It's called Two Thousand Unclipped Mules. Oh, says. Long sips. Uh, Kamala Harris, the fact that she is in the White House as vice president is... Uh, I mean, at stuff. this point, it kind of just makes sense, I guess. Yep. I'm a bit behind. Uh, you said that you like the Dresden Files TV show, Nerdrotic. I have a lot of faith in you. Super disappointed. I did. It was like one season. It was a long time ago. It's not as good as the books. Uh, but I enjoy, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I like the guy who the, uh, who the guy who they got to play Harry Dresden was, um, the dad in arrow. Not to arrows. Dad, trying to remember black, uh, canary's dad. The cop. Oh, uh, great show. What are your favorite bands and why? Uh, oh boy, that's a long uh, CBP. Oh, yeah, that's deep. Master Craig, that is a that I could be here for an hour saying that for two British pounds. Uh, I I like an eclectic uh, music. I don't like. I, it's easier to go with the, what I don't like. I'm not a fan of pop in general. Occasional song will break through, like that, like that theme for Miss Marvel, The Weekend. I like that song. It's a fun song. Yeah, but, right. Uh, it's a good song. It's a good song. Uh, but I don't like uh, country pop, and I, I don't like pop. I the like country uh, rap is even worse. Yeah, I hate but that like stuff. old school, like proper country, I love. Um, lots of punk rock, I love. Lots. Uh, I think like as I grew though, I liked metal more. Like punk and metal were always my thing, and soundtracks. But one of my favorite bands is Oingo Boingo. The first three albums are fucking genius. Uh, only Oingo Aladdin, Boingo is nothing awesome. to fear. Good for your soul. It's not a bad track on any of those albums, at all. So yeah, I like the the, the there's somebody, but like Jane's Addiction, Oingo Boingo, Megadeth, Black Sabbath, Dio, Danzig's probably one of my probably all time favorite. I would say Danzig. Uh, yeah. And then I like John Williams, Jerry Goldsmith. It's it's eclectic. It's really it's all over the place. Yeah. Reverend love Horton Heat. Love Reverend Horton Heat. A uh, little band out of Orange County called F Minus. They made like three albums. There were two chicks in the band. Uh yeah, I like that. Pink it's Floyd. hard to it's hard to put one pin one down, you know, because it kind of always changes, you know. My all-time favorite would be Cody and Cambria just because I love the how yeah. they are inspired by all of the greats like <sighs> Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. There's so much of that in, in them. And that's just like my, my first love is Cody and Cambria. But yeah, like, I mean, I kind of go all over the place. Like you, it's like the Eagles and then you Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. Rush. And Rush and Boston. And it's like it kind of, and then you got like a, I mean, just like I like easy listening rock. I like hard rock. I like metal. It's kind of all over the place. It just kind of depends on the day. Breakfast in America, Super Tramp, one of the greatest albums ever made. Super Tramp, Super Tramp, yeah. Breakfast in I America, Super Tramp, it's a fucking great album, dude. Uh, it just reminds me when I was like eleven. Yeah, it was right around when Empire came out. Like oh, that whole time, it was just like artistically, it was pretty, pretty fucking tight. Uh, but yeah, I like all kinds of shit. I like all kinds of shit. It's easier to just say what I don't like. I, I don't like Taylor fucking Swift. Oh, God. 
any of that shit. I don't I don't like it, any of it. I, I like Pretty I am much more, anything on the radio right I'm, now. I am a Prince guy, not a Michael Jackson guy. I don't like Michael Jackson. Nothing. You personal. know. Had nothing to do with the kids or anything, uh, because I've seen heard uh, I've heard Razor Fist arguments and I think they're yeah. pretty good. I think it's just I've never been a fan of the music, right? But it's not I, I used to be oh, Michael man. Jackson, which I still love Michael Jackson music. Don't get me wrong. I love it. We used to have records, um, with the bad record. Um, when I was a kid, we listened to it all the time. But over time, I'm coming over to the the prince. I think he was a better artist, he was a better performer. He was a better artist. He's just, uh, yeah, I think he's just better. Dude, like, there's catalogs of shit where I don't know if we're ever going to hear. Like, Right, what? yeah, he was, like, prolific. And he played every instrument, and he was a fucking shredder guitarist. And Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not that, again, Michael, as a performer, king of pop, totally believe yeah. it. Yep, fine. But, uh, yeah, I just never was into it. Uh, I like Elvis. Johnny Cash, probably one of my favorite. Johnny Cash. All time. Pink Floyd's probably my favorite band. If you want me to, Merle Haggard, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Stevie Ray Vaughan. I love Stevie Ray Vaughan. Los Lobos, it's a good band. Uh, yeah, I like a lot of shit. Uh, okay, where uh, Pink Floyd is the best, and that's a fact. Says CB, the master crack for two British pounds. I, I agree. I ain't gonna yeah. argue. I agree. I wish I could have seen them all together. You know, I've seen Gilmore's Pink Floyd and I've seen Roger Waters play Coachella and he played fucking animals, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And they lost the pig. That was so funny. <laughs> and they lost the pig. And the guy in charge of the pig was talking to me and Melissa and he got called away. It because was your like, fault. Uh, it, yeah, cause they, well, they were supposed to, he was in charge of the pig. People were supposed to be holding it. So he got the phone call. Like the pig's gone. He's like, What? And the pig just blew away. A million dollar pig, by the way. A million dollar pig. Yikes. For Roger Waters. Roger Waters getting more based every day, by the way. He's, you know, he's, he's a working class guy. He does the liberal thing, but like he's not yeah. really fucking hard against Facebook. I was like, yes. Um, avoid calling Danvers uh, other name. By our, oh, uh, Carl Danvers. Carl, Carl Danvers. Carl. Carl, thank you for the two dollars. Sean Thompson for five dollars. I I do want to say I like the girl they cast as Miss Marvel. Apparently, she reads the comics and texts Kevin Feige daily about continuity errors. Uh, Sean Thompson, yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm actually aware of that. She might be getting a little help. Um, I like the fact that she called out Kevin Feige on the six one six. I think that's you know she. Hey, she's a young, this is the reason, like, do I want to make a video ripping the shit out of this? Cause, but she's like, it, it's when I, when I make a video, I am not attacking anybody personally in the, in the show, uh, except for like Jar Jar Abrams and Kevin Feige. I, yes. I'm attacking you personally. No apologies. Um, but like, I'm not uh, like attacking their looks. I'm attacking their work, their work. Uh, and I'm criticizing it. I'm criticizing it. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm criticizing it because I know what motivates them to be bad. And I know they, they know this is the wrong decision creatively. I'll just throw it out there. Gore, the God butcher, great villain. No problem seeing Thor going against Gore, the God butcher played by Christian Bale. That sounds fucking awesome. Mm. Then why is Valkyrie and female Thor and all this goofy shit injected into something that would just be a badass battle? A, a Thor redemption arc. Why are why are we surrounding Thor with not one but two super powered women? And why do they need to do that with every male? Because they're apologetic for having a white male lead because they're really pushing the CRT white supremacy bullshit. They're really pushing this bullshit, which is really bad for our culture and our country. Because eventually we're all going to have to get along. It's either before a fight or after a fight. Which one do you want it to be? Well, these greedy, selfish corporations are more protective of their intellectual property and their shareholders, and they don't give a fuck if they tear apart the, tear apart the country protecting their garbage when all they have to do is make something good. 
and that will bring people together and you won't be dividing anybody. But Disney chose a side, the side of the groomer, the side of the backer of CRT, the side of intersectional feminism, which essentially makes women to men. They chose a side. And that that's the losing side because they chose against the paying customer who might in a lot of ways agree with them, but even they are getting sick of it. Finally. It takes a little while. It takes a little while it's for them to come around. I'm sorry that people get involved in shit that they don't know anything about. Like a lot, a lot of people get involved in these shows and they, they don't, you know what? Be informed. That's all I can say is be informed. When you take on a project, go watch some videos. It does not be mine. Go watch anybody. And Get you know, both, some both sides sometimes of back in the day, you'd have directors and writers that have no clue the source material, but sometimes it would still be good because back then you're having people make art. Now it's propaganda and the propaganda is the thing that makes everything horrible because they're focusing on that instead of good storytelling, good characters, interesting plot lines, spectacle. It's all like uninfused with this propaganda. So then it can't be good. It's in, unable to be good. Even if it was from somebody that has no idea what Thor is, no idea what any of these properties are, they can still make something interesting and cool, but they just can't because they're sh saddled with all this propaganda and agenda. Uh, yep. Uh, Jay Schwalbach for 3972 on the, uh, circumventing mama Susan. I What's keep up, hearing about this new DC superhero money pox. <laughs> money pox? You mean monkey pox? Monkey pox. Does this have his own movie? Just a comic streaming show? What's up with monkey pox? Hey, oh, Friday night tights. Oh, why does that say Friday night tights? Oh, okay. It's from today, but hey, oh, Friday night tights. Yeah, FNT was uh, good. Oh, you're probably congratulating. It was a fucking great show, by the way. Thanks, Jay. And that's thanks to you. And thanks. Jay. That was a great yeah. show, man. I love that show. Uh, Matthew Hammond for $2. Tom Petty was great up until his death. I saw him on his last tour and he was great. He wrote so many great songs. Yeah. You know, we, we forget that these old rockers that we, we love, they're still dealing with their demons largely. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I think maybe some of us assume that, Hey, they're living longer. Maybe they're sober. No, poor Tom. You know, we lost a lot of people in 2000, uh, in 2016. Remember how many people died? Yeah. in 2016 remember how many celebrities died and you know what was behind a lot of those deaths opiates mm. opiates the opiate epidemic has gotten out of control i mean it's people are graduating to fentanyl and we're finding out fentanyl what, what killed george floyd fentanyl uh what killed um prince probably fentanyl it was opioids for sure opioids yeah. what killed tom petty dope dude it's just it's just over and over again yep. poor david Bowie died of cancer okay and uh the world has not been the same without probably the greatest single artist who ever lived but we've lost too many people to fucking uh, art bell opioids michael jackson yeah we're just talking about him yeah, it's it's it is literally the epidemic that we should be worried about. Like this should be up on CNN all yeah. day long, every day. Like this is what we should actually be worrying about. But we're not. I was losing my. It doesn't happen. San Francisco, while my wife's fucking salon was shut down, uh, while that year happened, more people died of fentanyl and drug overdoses than of COVID. Uh, the San Francisco DA was just recalled by Democrats today because he was letting too many people go. And, and now they have this, I mean, people are dying on the streets of San Francisco Yep, because this fucker let people go and LA's DA's next. You, you, he's about to get recalled as well, but somehow Gavin Newsom survived weird. Interesting. Totally fucking weird. Uh, the, the guy in the LA fucking DA is like, it's a Republican 
conspiracy. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Dude, you're in Los Angeles. They Stop. tried to pull that shit in San Francisco, too. It's like uh, a Republican hasn't had power in San Francisco in 58 years. That's over a half a century. It's all you yeah. guys. It's all you. Nobody to point to. These are your Democratic strongholds. Los Angeles, San Francisco. They're dystopian nightmares. It's so stunning and brave of Disney to borrow South Park's method of six days to air with all their product products. The production quality is so impressive with how little time they have to work with. It's a paranoid Android for $10 with sarcasm, by the way. Uh, Enoch Maman for $1 says uh, P4. Anyway, Merry Christmas, everyone. If you don't eat your peas and I don't even know what that, uh, it will put your jaw. What the hell is this dude? Okay. Uh, if you don't eat your peas and a cello and ocelot will put jam in your slippers. Corn oh, pop was a bad dude. Gaming was oh, okay. in my sleep now. Okay. I got okay. it. Okay. All right. <laughs> what am I reading? Who wrote that? A president? I know. Right corn pop and i just remembered they stole the preserved body from the uh completion of dune by frank herbert or his son brian herbert and kevin anderson i don't remember the exact work i think it is uh chapter house dune or the books that come after it uh yeah dude they they're stealing a lot uh unfortunately they're not stealing anything in a good way <laughs> thank you for the ten dollars <laughs> Uh, they're not stealing anything in a good way. It's very, very, very bad. All right, we got to get out of here. It's uh three fourteen. Oh, yeah. WG has just super chat fifty dollars. <laughs> WG, I oh. care. if you like Super Tramp, listen to Roger Hodgson's solo song "Had a Dream." Great tune. I, I, sir, I've heard it. I've heard it. Uh, soup i mean breakfast uh breakfast in america is like special like it's really really good uh losing the pig was also a simpsons joke says gerald armstrong for a dollar 99 yeah true story uh melissa and i were talking to the guy who was responsible for roger waters lost pig <laughs> and yes i remember the simpsons as well uh not a pig floyd fan but the wall was one of my favorite albums says read about productions for two dollars right, there you go uh, knock them on. Oh, that's part four of four. What the? Huh? I'm not going to see where the first ones are. They're not lined up. This is where I miss X ray girl because she would have lined them all up. She for lined me. them up. Yeah. Uh, Ezra, I know, I know identity as it, I now identify as an ident as an innocent grapefruit, says red for a pound 79. He'll probably try, but he's probably going to like film his next arrest for NFTs, like you said. What the fuck was that about? Uh, I'm a. Oh, I read that one. We got to go to the bottom here because I read one that was funny. Uh, Gary's not late. He's punctual. Punctual adjacent. Five. <laughs> uh, Justin Gould for ten dollars. Just watched a BCS midseason finale uh, the first time before watching Kenobi. Uh, Disney Star Wars cannot compare and is utter trash, utter trash. BCS is how you make a prequel. Uh, KRG 927 for $5. If you would like a palate cleanser for the dumpster fire, that is Kenobi. Check out a reimagined Kenobi Vader duel in episode four at Lixton post. Okay. I also have that, uh, cut. The Kenobi cut, I guess. There's already a Kenobi cut. How bad? How bad is that? When that there's a sad. Kenobi cut for your series is even over. Jaden Mejan for five dollars. Kenobi had the same plot as the Incredibles. One second he can't even move a paperweight, but he if you want me to believe he can now hold an ocean, lazy, right? Uh, thank you for the super sticker. Audibly choppy, tricky for ten dollars. Disney's turned Star Wars into a one trick pony. It is dead, and they keep kicking it. You're right. It's a dead one trick pony. Yep. How the heck do you fit three and a half people in a T4 in a T47? You would have to remove the engine. 
the rear facing plate is the cargo manager. They use the magnetic tow cable to haul uh, repulsor lifts. Hey, you know, audibly choppy for $10. You should be working for them, but you know too much. <laughs> they wouldn't care if you told them. They'd be like, yeah, whatever. Imagine a new Star Wars with the quality of 2021 Dune, but Empire Strikes Back will never happen again. Yeah, Steve Russ. That's what we thought we'd get, but Disney is um, incapable of making anything good. Yeah. Too, they're too big. Too big to succeed. It's Mormon time, says Eric K for $2. <laughs> Failed again. They re-released it, and it flopped again. Do y'all think Disney learned from the Jake's... Skywalker syndrome? Obviously not. Morgan Bell for $9.99 after what I just watched. No. Uh, excuse me, but my canon sense uh, is my common sense, they would take the Force Unleashed computer game and turn it into a TV show or movie. They will. They, they will. They will take everything you loved and turn it into uh, shit. Uh, if you remember the delayed uh, they delayed the series to fix the plot writing. I think they might have had a good series, but Kathleen Kennedy and Lucas group got in there and made him Fredo Kenobi adding the Leia story says Kevin door for $10. I agree with you. I think the first one didn't have Leia and um, Kathleen Kennedy. She was famous for interrupting Spielberg with shitty ideas, by the way, <laughs> even admitted it came in and goes, um, why don't we just do Leia instead of Luke? Because she's a girl and the force is female. And that's why they did it. It's so blatantly obvious that's why they did it. It's all contrived in order to make her the focus. Yep. It's so contrived. All right, Quarter Black, uh, plug your wares, sir. Yo, my channel. It's uh, Quarter Black Garrett. You can find me there. And uh, also on this channel, where we're going to be releasing a Lord of the Rings video pretty soon. Perry's working on it right now. And uh, come see us in Dallas, June 16th, next week. It's going to be fun. The whole weekend. Just stay the whole weekend, come to the con, and we'll see you there. Yeah, we'll be running around like knuckleheads, having a good time. And like, be a blast. The, the con is fun, but like, you know, we're probably going to go out and like play mini golf and do shit like that. Yeah. That sounds fun. Bowling, who knows? Bowling, bowling, definitely bowling. Um, Maybe we'll find Ethan Ralph's uh, bowling alley that he went to. Yeah. And we'll make it fun. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, I'm trying to invite all the um, YouTube people I know who live in Texas, which is like a handful. So I, I've invited Carrie Smith and uh, her husband. I think they're going to be there. She has said she's going to be there. Nice. Uh, pretty sure Eric July is going to be there. Um, Melanie Mack said she'd be there. Uh, I have I have sent out invites to others who have given maybes, so uh, we'll see if it happens. Um, but I, I'll, uh, Jeremy will be there, Ryan will be there, Quarter Black will be there, I'll be there. Kristen Nova is going to be there. Odin, Odin's going to be there. C Comics Division is going to be there. Comics. Yeah, and I know it's gonna I'm be a blast, man. It's going to be so it's fun. It's going to be good. I'm excited. And we are doing a show. We're uh, Friday Night Tights is happening as scheduled. Uh, at the at the at our hotel room so uh george george is gonna be george. there yeah that is right george is gonna be there so hey thanks everyone i appreciate you watching thanks everyone in the chat thanks anywhere everyone who left a super chat and donation you help keep the lights on thanks to the mod rodics i am forever grateful to you lovely people uh anybody who just took the time out to kick back and watch and have a good time thank you very much we will be back friday with uh oh, our guests again i keep blanking for Friday Night Tights. It's Corbin. Dan Vask and Crip Daddy. Dan Vask and Crip Daddy for Friday Night Tights. That's going to be fun. It's going to be crazy. Uh, and you never know who else will show up. You never, ever know. And I never think, know. yeah, I think that Lord of the Rings video will be out tomorrow. I think so. I mean, if it doesn't, it doesn't. It'll be Friday. Whenever Perry's done, basically. I try not to rush the man. I just rush Garrett. I don't rush Perry. <laughs> Not fair, but life isn't fair. No, it's all good. I'm just kidding. We have deadlines, man. Deadlines to deadlines. me. I'm going to work on this office now when I'm done. I'm going to fucking finish this shit because we're, we're close. It's looking good, man. It's looking good. Thanks, dude. Thanks, dude. All right. And uh, probably watch some more Skinwalker Ranch.
Of course. And finish Stranger <laughs> Things. I got to finish Stranger Things. With yeah, that. dude, it's pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty good, good so far. I'm liking it. Uh, I hope Dan Vass brings his whalebone. Yes, I, I truly do. Uh, so, yeah, we'll see you everybody Friday. Please enjoy some credits. Remember, not all who wander are lost, and may the wings of liberty never lose. Nerdorotic.com. Remember, this will be up on Nerd Live in the next couple of hours. Ciao!